It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... No! Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, August 1st, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well on this first day of August. 2022. It's good to be here. A lot to discuss. A lot has happened. I hope you had a lovely weekend. Bit of a rainy one. Bit of a chilly one today outside. Hope you're safe and sound, healthy, wherever you may be. So much going on. I'm back from Nashville, which by the way, sneaky fun town, Nashville. No one told me it was so fun. They have these people riding on these cars and it's like eight people just dancing. There's music, there's cowboy hats, there's pedals involved. It's just a, it's a blast of a town. Of course, I didn't partake in any of this. Last time I was there was 2012. First time I was there, I think it was 2010 for the, uh, the Strike Force, Strike Force card, of course, you know, the Diaz, Jake Shields, Mayhem, Hendo, CBS, these things happen, MMA, Gus Johnson, all that and more. Um, fun town. I enjoyed it. I was there for SummerSlam. Didn't stay for SummerSlam. Left Saturday morning because, of course, uh, UFC 277 happened on Saturday night. And that was, I think, a pretty fun show. The the main card was the highlight going in. And it was the highlight going out, if you ask me. All five fights were notable, were fun, were exciting, were uh, captivating in their own right. And, of course, the big news at the top, Amanda Nunes once again the UFC Women's Bantamweight Champion. Phenomenal win against Juliana Pena. There were a lot of question marks about how she would look, a lot of question marks about the decision to leave ATT, to leave her coaches of so many years, to leave her management of so many years, to start her own thing. Was it uh, just a bad night? Was she actually really sick? Was she off? Or did Juliana Pena have her number? Did Juliana Pena, uh, you know, call her shot? And, you know, they fight... 10 times she wins, 8 out of the 10. I compared it to a Mike Brown, Uriah Faber situation or Benson Henderson, Frank Yeager. Some matchups just favor one side of the matchup. Well, we found that on Saturday, not the case. And we found out that uh, all those decisions that she made leading up to this fight uh, that were scrutinized proved to be good decisions because she looked great. She looked like the Amanda of old. Juan via decision, uh, it was pretty one-sided. However, if you just look at the scorecards, and even if you just look at the stats, it doesn't really tell the story of the fight. The story of the fight was Amanda Nunes back, looked good, had great moments, dominant moments, second round in particular with the multiple knockdowns, all very good. But you can't tell the story of this fight without tipping your cap to Juliana Pena. Uh, she could have given up in the second. She kept on fighting. She kept on going. She kept on threatening. She kept trying for new things, at least on the ground a couple of times. Juliana Pena, I think, earned everyone's respect and then some. Michael Chiesa, uh, you know, referenced the great Jim Ross and compared it to a $2 stake, uh, tougher than a $2 stake. That's the great JR line. And um, I mean, I think it's pretty uh, appropriate in this regard. Her face was all bloodied, all beaten up. I actually spoke to her for a little bit yesterday via text. Seems to be in relatively good spirits. Bum, um, you know, obviously the... Uh, the love that she is getting makes her feel good, but that doesn't really translate into, you know, the feeling that you would have if you're still the champion, if you prove that the first fight wasn't a fluke, as people might want to say. I don't believe the first fight was a fluke. I believe she was the better fighter that night. And on this night, uh, Amanda Nunes was the better fight. And by the way, I would be okay with a third fight between them in relative short order. And we will get into all of that. The other news, of course, Brandon Moreno is the new UFC interim flyweight champion. He defeats Kai Kaikara France uh, in the third round, beautiful liver kick, and then the ground and pound and devastation for KKF and for GC, but mainly for KKF because he was looking great in that third round. Moreno uh, poured it on, nailed him with that kick, hook, kick, and then the ground and pound. And then we have the moment with Davis and Figueredo, which actually turned out to be a very Kumbaya-like moment. And it seems as though we are on the road to the quadrilogy. I still can't figure out if it's quadrilogy or quadrology. Either way, it appears to be going down the fourth fight between these two guys who have become rivals and they will always be connected to each other, much like Gotti Ward, much like Marquez and Pacquiao, uh, some of the great trilogies slash quadrilogies in... Uh, in boxing history and fighting history. Uh, these two guys will always be linked and I'm looking forward 
to the fourth fight. Uh, Sergei Pavlovich with a somewhat controversial win over Derek Lewis. Alexandre Pantoja with an amazing win over Alex Perez. He looked phenomenal. And Magomed Ankalaev with a big win over Anthony Smith. Hopefully you didn't take that all underdog uh, parlay that I referenced on Monday. So we have a lot to talk about. Oh, excuse me, was it Monday or Wednesday? It might've been Wednesday. Uh, we have a lot to talk about on today's show. As always, we are brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of the UFC and more importantly, the MMA Hour. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use code MMA Hour for a special offer when you sign up again. That's code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Please support them because they support us. Back into the show, we're going to be joined by James Kraus, the now head coach for Brandon Moreno. Uh, now, for the first time in his career as a coach, as he transitions away, we know him, of course, many years, UFC, WEC, all over the place. But uh, now as he transitions into full-time head coaching, he hasn't quite shut the door on the fighting career, but it appears as though that's you know where he's leaning. Uh, he's got that great gym, Glory MMA and, uh, and fitness out of Kansas City. And he's got this amazing situation. Um, and he's developing a lot of great fighters. And he has Brandon Moreno coming over there and uh, training with him after leaving his team. And now he gets his first champion. It's an interim champion, but you could tell just looking at his Instagram, it appears as though he was over the moon, very emotional afterwards, very happy. He did some great work. Uh, between the rounds and has developed into one of the best coaches in the game. So we'll talk to James Krause about all of that at around 3.30. At 3 o'clock, we're going to be joined by Davison Figueredo, who, of course, was in the uh, in attendance. He, uh, Davison Figueredo just put a bunch of stuff on Instagram, like eight stories in a row and tagged me. I don't know if it's like, Hey man, I'm excited to be on your show or you could go fly a kite. So I think the Brazilian beast, Guilherme Cruz is translating it for me, uh, but I hope he'll be joining us. And I think he'll be joining us. Uh, he was in attendance. He's got his new management. Unfortunately, uh, a bit of a divorce situation with uh, the great Valid Ishmael. He looked great with that sweater. He had the belt. It was a very heel-like move. I think he was coming in there looking for a fight, not a physical fight, but at least a, a verbal altercation. It didn't quite happen but want to get an update on his situation. So we'll talk to the uh, UFC flyweight champion, Davison Figueredo, at 3 o'clock. 2.30, the uh, welterweight and middleweight champion of KSW, Roberto Soldic, will join us. The pride of Croatia, been in the news as of late. And as you may have heard, a free agent. And I look forward to speaking to him. What I what was with the side Might eyes? Might, I mean, I was just leaving it at that. In any event, at 2 o'clock, Brandon Moreno is going to join us. And uh, in case you heard uh, or missed it, uh, the interim flyweight champion of the UFC is going to join us. He is a very happy man, a great performance, and always love talking to him. And uh, I feel I feel for Kai Car France. He was so bummed afterwards. He had Izzy there. He had uh, Volkanovski there, of course. That team is so close, tight-knit. He will be back. He has come a long way over the last couple of years, uh, but it just wasn't his night this past Saturday in Dallas. So I have mixed emotions on this Monday, my friends. Uh, I'm I'm very happy because most importantly, it's our good friend New York Rick's birthday today. Hey! Oh, this is great. <laughs> Wow, there it is. The big NYR. How are you, sir? Happy birthday. I'm good. How are you? I was th th that that shot of Connor just clapping and then just be like, oh shit. <laughs> am I uh am I on camera here? How old are we today? The big five oh. Yeah, right. No, 35. Oh, 35. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> well, what, uh, you say, like, what? I don't, I don't know. know what to make of that. I thought, I honestly, we think, like, I thought I older. Die before. No, no. <laughs> I actually thought you were older. Wow. Young man. 36, 37. Wow. Uh, should we read the email? I feel like, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm please. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Save, <laughs> that, save that for like, <laughs> I was I'm, say, kidding, I'm kidding. Save, save that for another day. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, no, happy no, birthday. No. Wow. What a, what a great day for you. I mean, last year, uh, you couldn't have been further away from this program on your birthday. Now, here you are a full year later. 
a mainstay on the Monday program, so this is big. I honestly don't know what I, what I was doing last year at this time. August 1st, 2021? a pay-per-view. I was probably oh, on site. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero gone. Yeah, it was yes, like... Yes, I was in Houston for... On, was on the... It was like August 5th or, or something. Yeah, I must have like... I must have been just flying out the next day. Any big plans? Uh, I'm going to go home and have dinner with my family. Oh, what about lunch today? Have dinner? Yeah. yeah. I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure how quickly we'd get to that, but uh, I will... Let, let's start it here. Shout out to legendary Mensch, mm. like Mensch of all Menches, Bill Steinmetz, longtime fan of the show, who had matzo ball soup yes. delivered yeah. from Katz's. Unbelievable. I, mean, I don't know if that was for you or for me, but, you know. It was for, it was for all of us. I know, but it just for like the, the sentimental. Yeah. I know, but yeah. Um, and and uh, feeding the crew with that. And then we got some uh, some che little cheesecake bites, a real cake, um, just just... No, nobody does it better than Bill. Bill, Bill knows how to send the goods. Uh, so shout out to to fan of the show and friend Bill Steinmetz who who took care of us today. Wow! And also sent you uh, cupcakes. Yeah, like cheese. It's like mini cheesecake bites. I love it. And, uh, and some cake. Yeah, we did well. And and Bill, uh, thank you for that. The the crew is first time matzo ball soup. It's looking a little sleepy back here. I gotta admit. Yeah. But like this intro. He popped uh, GC's matzo ball soup cherry. Mm. Yeah, that's what you anybody else? Yeah. Anybody else first time? Lost, no, I feel like just lots of ball virginity. Yeah, so it was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, tastes like chicken soup. What do you think of the texture? The texture is always a big thing. I liked it. It was tough when I was looking it right in the eye, right right before I went into it, having no idea what it tastes like. Just like the giant yeah blob in in the broth. I was a little bit nervous, but you never seen bread good. and soup before. I didn't hear what Frank said. Oh, he said, have you ever tasted bread and soup before? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of what it tastes like. I added some oyster crackers as well. Yeah, not a big fan of the oyster crackers in the soup. There's enough going on there where I feel it like it becomes... Soup. Oh, it's a great soup. I'd eat it again. Uh, I, I like the tactic. You kind of turn it into a cup after a while. Yeah. I like that uh, he said looking it in the eye. Like he's having like a stare down with the soup. I mean, it, especially right. when it was in the clear container and it's like it looks like a jar. Like it looks like something that should be in a scientist's lab or something. You know what's always looked like that to me? Another Jewish staple, gefilte fish in the Oh, I can't jar. do that. Oh, yeah. Can't do that. Uh, can't do gefilte fish. That's always looked a little bit like a, like a formaldehyde yeah. science experiment. You you like gefilte fish, Ariel? Eh, my wife's family likes it. I'll take it or leave it. I'll never so, seek it out. I'll never order it. One question I do have on the matzo ball. The Please. tactic about going about it, do you break it up right before you go in? No. So it's like pieces? No, no, Okay, no. so you scoop it's off just of like, it well, as you work. Piece, a piece, you're, 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 you're chopping away, you're chopping okay. away, you're chopping away. I crushed it all up. And no, like, weird. Nah, okay. Rookie, you got to right. enjoy yeah, yeah. the... I am a rookie, so... Yeah, yeah. you should have asked. Uh, weirdest matzo ball soup experience for me, no doubt, was when I had it at the... Uh, you know what I'm about to say? Yeah. When, yeah. when I had it at exactly. the ESPN cafeteria with Izzy. Oh, man. You, you've seen this video? Uh, no, Izzy, I, I haven't. At some point, is this like, yeah, I'm not really feeling the spoon. I'm just going to use my hands and starts eating it with his hands. Uh, that, I mean, that's... Like, takes that's, the ball out of the that's, soup that's, and it's that's, just... That's, <laughs> listen. That's the way he does it back home. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I respected it. I've and just also, never done it that way. What I'll always remember about that is how much he loved the cafeteria food he loved. at ESPN. Well... The cafeteria it, food at ESPN. To be good. fair, we, that meal that we had was ordered. Oh, it was catered. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, you just they, happened to eat it into the cafeteria. No, well, the right. the, the whole thing was that we were going to have matzo ball soup together, but they okay. didn't. You know, they don't really have that on the menu. Uh, yeah, you loved I loved it. the cafeteria. You loved it. So yeah, that was a good one. So uh, happy birthday! Thank you. It's good to have you here. So that's why I'm in a great mood. Sad mood. I will. Uh, so I, I, there's multiple mix of emotions. Okay, let's happy see. mood. Uh, birthday. Sad mood. No fight this weekend. Jake Paul fight canceled. Very sad about this. Selfishly. Uh, Showtime, MSG, big moment. I was going to host a press conference. They just told me on Friday that I was going to host a press conference. Then I was going to do the weigh-ins. Then I was going to do the event in the ring. I've never done that before. So sad. Um, don't cry for me, Argentina. These things happen, but I am bummed. Happy, though. Happy. So there's the mix of emotions. Happy, sad, happy. Our big guy, Mysterious Frank, is officially a part of the family. Wait, I thought it was a part of the family before. Well, it's official now. Oh, okay. uh, the theater was no, at an all-time no high. Yeah, something? Could we get something? No? Breaking news? No, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Breaking news breaking it happened news? on Saturday. How about um... celebratory music? <laughs> there we go. Mm. Yeah, that seemed appropriate. 
What am, I mean, right I mean, should we just kick him back out? He's not taking this. I, I, I feel I, like I you were all in on the, uh, what was it called? Parlay Pals, the uh, the text chat that we had. Uh, you were all in. And you know what? Now I get it. Now I get why people actually partake in these gambling things because I was more invested in the either, you know, success or plight of one mysterious Frank on Saturday than I was in anything on sure. Saturday night at UFC 277. For those that missed it, what happened was we did the first ever official MMA hour parlay. Uh, we're now two for two. So, you know, they don't, they, they like to talk about the curses. They like to talk when you fail. I don't see anyone giving us our flowers for going two for two now. How quickly people put curses on, on I know. the show. I mean, I wear a t-shirt for two fighters and they're like, you're a jinx, you're yep. a curse. I don't know yep. what you guys are talking about. GTFO. You are cursed. We, we GTFO. Don't, yeah, we don't talk about Ngannou winning. We don't talk about Nothing. Izzy being on such a huge win streak. I'm telling you. Anyway, uh, you had I, I, my guy won first. Yep. The, uh, what was Michael, it? Michael Morales. Morales. Then it was uh, your guy, right? Alexandre Pantoja wins. Easy. Win. Then the Derek Lewis, a bit of a depressing finish, but still you get the nod under two and a half. Easy. And then all roads led to one mysterious Frank. And the pressure was high. Were you nervous? You know what? I'd lie to say that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was definitely feeling it. And uh, what, what, look, give us the setup. Did you watch? Did you order it? What did, so what I ordered it. Um, I watched it with... The misses. Yeah. So is this the first time you ever ordered a pay-per-view? For UFC? Yeah. Yeah. What else would you order a pay-per-view for? I don't know. For? I actually when I said that out loud. Jake Paul. He ordered the last Jake Paul one. That's right. So you sat down. You, you're so invested in all of this. And yeah. you said, I'm going to order this pay-per-view. I, I was like, let's let's order this pay-per-view. Let's We watched the whole card. Wow. Top to bottom? Like top prelims to bottom. too? The wow. early prelims, I was um, cleaning up a, a synthesizer. So I was okay. kind of half paying attention. All right. But, um, uh, then the the actual prelims had my full undivided attention, and then the main card, obviously. Wow. The only thing that was distracting me besides the Parley Pals was the uh, tweets that were going out. That was pretty interesting. By who? But just uh, the general community. I think everybody wanted to see if this was going to work oh, out. Oh, tweets yeah. about so, so that was yeah yeah so it encouraging. Felt, it felt more like a community driven thing than just a decision that we made yeah the four of us so it was cool were you nervous i mean as the fight was going on and those arm bars started coming out yeah i was like this could actually just flip you know amanda looked great but at the same time <laughs> like uh, pena wasn't giving up right so it wasn't that's why when we were done you know i was excited but i was like it wasn't as clean as some of the other nodes on the parlay were, were you know the two and a half ended in the first right or if i'm mm -hmm. remembering correctly and then um, Morales was great as well. So this one was—I like, felt like it was a little bit more tense, but it was good theater. You know, like it—it it was tremendous. It for all five rounds. It was pretty cool. It was amazing that your, uh, you know, your your leg of the parlay was last. So it all led to you. So now you're officially in. And I wanted to offer you this. You know, oh, an offer. Yeah, you're you're in. You can choose. Well, I want to ask the other two members of uh, the Parlay Pals. About this idea, uh, should Frank now have to be involved in every parlay, or does he have the ability to come in and come out I, as he sees fit? I hadn't anticipated this. Mm -hmm. Caught me off guard. I like the idea of Frank popping in when he wants. Yes, I, I agree with that. He's already begging to get out because he, for <laughs> some reason, doesn't have the excitement that I share for UFC Apex 59, both the tough Thank finales you. as well. Was, Huge card this yes. Saturday. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, he he doesn't... You already want out? Excitement. No, I think the truth of it is they um, they want to retain some sort of control if they feel like I'm going to make a stupid pick. Do you want in? He comes over to oh, my desk. He moseys in. over to my desk. Don't listen to anything Connor said. He, he moseys over to my desk this morning. What's <laughs> up, man? Like, uh, So do we have to do the parlay every uh, single week or like, can we skip this one? Wow. The question yeah, was, are up. you watching the game can, this weekend? Let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Yeah. Because I saw some internet, some Twitter.com concern about like the serious. Oh, please. Part of it, right. Yeah, like yeah. talking about like it didn't seem like, first of all, some of this is done in real time, right? We're, we're doing a show here. Yeah. There's some lighten there's some up, pals. Theatrics to this. Second of all, if somebody, let me say this for the record, if somebody was making a parlay leg that I thought was not going to cash, that I thought was going to affect my. You're stepping in. I'm going to say something. As an example, Derek Lewis, 
No, I don't know. That wouldn't have been that wouldn't have been in the parlay if somebody had conceived. No, it. no, no. That wasn't in the parlay because GC yes, picked. Lu- I know. So, so, so actually, the one who deserves the credit for that is Jed for yeah. for pushing it out. Yeah, yeah. My alternative, the one I was eyeing was well, no, it's DraftKings over yeah. Jed. Oh yeah, Jed was actually saying that we could do it. Yeah, take Jed, that back. Yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, but Forget I was you. I was eyeing the over one and a half for Nunez Pena at like minus two hundred, which also I think was was. Mm. A good one. Although it looked a little dicier in the beginning because Amanda dropped her so many times. But anyway, uh, yeah, if somebody's going to make a pick that I think is going to tank our parlay, rest assured there will be a vocalization of it. No mention of my pick of Jace, Drakkar Close. <laughs> Your yes. pick of Jace? I, I literally... On for the minus 600 pick. Wow. Listen. There were, by the way, there were for, there were a few people that actually sent me a slip with Drakkar in it. Yeah. In it. Yeah. Uh. yeah, next time make it the h out. Next time do something. Was he double an h out? I don't think he was no, h yeah, but you Double I mean, it up next when, time. Be like, you, you know what? Sweat. I want Michael Morales and... <laughs> all right, all right. When have you ever cared if they're actually an underdog? Uh, I mean, you can just pick them. Just quickly, for people that don't know what it is, if yeah, please. Just graphic up, you know, just to just to yeah. Let's recap yeah, yeah. this. Let's revel. Uh, it's a big moment for us. All those haters, yeah, they're I mean, like, oh, you didn't take it serious. Not bad. I mean, we're two and we have it. There it is. I mean, look at that. Plus, we're we're up three <laughs> units on this bad boy. Wow. Good. We got. I mean, if we're putting a unit on each one, we got a few weeks to uh, to work. My favorite was a few people saying like, "Thanks for getting me the pay per view. Like you, you covered my costs. You know, like yeah, oh, yeah that's you're welcome. Great. Yeah, you're welcome. Easy, light work. Uh, yeah, there it is. So Amanda Nunez money line. Frank nails it. Louis Pavlovich uh, under two and a half nails it. Uh, Michael Morales nails it. Quick question. And uh, I'm just going through this one second. Pantoja nails it. Yes. Well, why am I in color and everyone else is black and white? I don't know, because you're the you're the big dog. All right then. Can you see the color? I thought I pixelated this enough. Yeah, I feel like the pixelated black and white might just look like a smudge. It's I feel like you gotta yeah. kind of see. Well, it. I'll keep my questions for the end. Of this. Yeah, I will say I think my uh, both my under two and a half or or both my under props. I think they've lasted a combined like fifty three seconds right. or something. Now, so you guys didn't watch together, GC and Frank. I mean, there was a great, great response no. to the it wasn't even in the sleepover. State. Yeah, I was. Oh, I was where in were New you? Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. I was in New Jersey. Alpine. Uh, yes, that is where I was at. Uh, breaking down the fourth wall here, giving the exact location. <laughs> Might as well say the address while you're Yo, at it. Wow, is that really such a big deal? Uh, it's become like a little, a bit of a thing. You know, me oh. and one of my friends, we go golfing. You know, we trade buying See, each other around a round of golf for our birthdays. Now, now you what? Now you went too far into it. Now is that really thing. is that really a thing? Like, should I not have said that? No, no, no. Frank's I'm rubbing off on you. All right, the actual city itself, though. But uh, okay, uh, I did learn that I I like to be in my own domain uh, during pay per view cards. Why is that? Uh, so I went out there Saturday. You know, hung out by the pool. Beautiful house in in as you mentioned, uh, Alpine, <laughs> New Jersey. Uh, I mean, great place. Uh, and it was a it was a whole family ordeal. I was over at my friend's house. The entire family was there. They had a big dinner planned for Saturday night. We're sitting out on these people's porch, and it's it's just this beautiful summer evening. But it's like seven thirty, and the card had already oh, started, no. and I'm not able to watch anything. And I'm sitting at dinner talking with Grandma, and you know, Ji Yeon Kim, Jocelyn Edwards is on, and I am sweating whether or not the over two and a half is hit or not. I can't watch any of the fights. Uh, at one point, my friend is like, all right, we're going to go in and watch the fights. And, like, the mom and sister were like, no, no, no. Like, what? You guys are already going inside? And I was just Aww. like, oh, God. I was like, I need to get in front of a TV. It was, uh, yeah, I've, I learned quickly that I, I like to have control on on pay-per-view days. It's uh, it's an anxious feeling not being. So when did you start watching? Uh, the Dante, no, the Drakkar Close fight. Oh, perfect timing. I streamed during appetizers and whatnot, you know, happy hour. I was, I was, uh, what is this, like a full catered hour, event? Right? Yeah. This place was crazy. It was nice. It was Think just like it. a regular, what was the occasion? Did, did my invitation Saturday get night. lost on the couch? Or? It was just a Saturday night? Saturday night in Alpine, New Jersey, yeah. Did you consider inviting Frank? Could you imagine if you should? <laughs> I think they were making these plans in front of me, actually, last week. Yeah, we literally made the plan. <laughs> Here's my plus one. Serious Frank shows up with hey, a pixelated Speaking mask. of learning things, um, some people on Twitter rode with us on the parlay. Yeah. But I noticed that their slip said for the uh, under two and a half rounds, said no fight to begin round three. Like, is that just another way of saying the same thing? No, that's like an alternate total. Okay. That would mean that, that would mean it, it has to end in the first two rounds. Right. That so one's like, slightly different. They took a little bit of a different play there. So, I mean, they're not really riding with yeah. us. Okay, cool. Got it. 
I mean, didn't matter. Ultimately, didn't matter. Didn't, both yeah. cash. Right. those both cash. You What'd you go, oh, okay, let's person. talk about this because there's a few things I need to ask you guys about. Um, I said on Twitter while it was all happening, didn't love the stoppage. No problem with it. No problem? Zero. I mean, Why? He ate, he ate. Because, and and I, I may have done this rant, I may have not, I'll do it, I'll do it again. If everybody is going to be very concerned about athlete and fighter health and talk about preserving their brains and, and criticizing and going out of their way to overly criticize, in my opinion, the late stoppages and the referees having the toughest job possible and, oh, that stoppage was so late, so, so late, so late, so late. These refs are terrible. I can't believe this guy let him do this. I can't believe this happened. Then this is, this is the consequence of that. We're going to get stoppages that are not super clean. We're going to get stoppages that may be early. But also, we're going to preserve fighters. Like I, I, I can't hear the argument. But was of, he out? Let him take another was coffin nail. Was he getting out of that? Was Derek Lewis about to pop up and? It actually looked out? like he popped up. Yeah, he popped up after he got his head bounced off the mat. <laughs> he went face first down. That was a super bad looking way to fall. Yeah, yeah. And Derek Lewis does that, after and that's on like Derek 20 Lewis. Consecutive shots. He's he was just going to eat coffin nails there. I'm I'm so tired of the of the athlete health con, you know the going overboard in my opinion about this. Like, you know, we have to protect the athletes. They don't know what's good for them. We have to protect. Feels the athletes. like you're taking a shot at me here. <laughs> I'm taking a shot at everybody who's on that on that side of the fence. It just this it is felt like fine. a flash. I feel like he, he was, was good. Oh, Listen, like a flash knockout. would you rather have that or him eat the shots? No, of course I don't want him to eat that so then let's, But I thought let's, he was good. He's He was not good. He just face planted five seconds ago. Not even. Two seconds ago. And he was there against a big heavyweight with a lot of power who was about to deliver some really hard shots to him. I'm perfectly fine if some of the stoppages look like this if we truly are going to protect the athletes from taking further damage. I can't, it's too fine a line, and, and I'm really completely fine with it. I, I don't want to... There's no need. That fight was not flipping around. Derek Lewis was not coming back to win that fight. Uh, let's let's just be okay with stoppages that look a little bit like that. And to be honest, even if even if we were like even if there wasn't um, as much talk about that uh, being a fight where Derek Lewis could have could have come back and it stopped early, face plant like that and the stoppage is fine in my opinion. No more Derek Lewis in Texas, please. <laughs> no more Derek it's Lewis bad. in Texas. Yeah, it's Bit of a break. That's two in a row now. Uh, and then, of course, the Gon fight. So three of his last four fights in Texas, all lost via TKO or KO. Yeah. I love his walkout, though. His walkout. That was amazing. Right. Can't stop it. Also, it's a fat pad. Down, down, this, down, down, down. Yeah. this is Derek Lewis. Like, he's he went on a long win streak. Yeah. Or went on a win streak. But he's a killer, be killed fighter. He's in there against... Every time he fights, he's in there against somebody who's able to knock him out and he's able to knock them out every single time he fights and he got knocked out he'll be up next and he might knock out the next guy like this is De this is Derek Lewis's style of fighting this is what you can expect um I'm not ready to I'm, say he's done though yeah I remember like, a time where Andre Arlovsky lost like four in a row via knockout 12 years ago in strike force but yeah and that's my point like Andre Arlovsky is not that type of fighter right he's more of a of a of a technique fighter he's circling around he's trying to score points Derek Lewis is in there to Get murked or murk, and like he got murked. Next time he might murk somebody. That's it. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write this as like an indictment on Derek Lewis. This is the style of fight that Derek Lewis fights. The next time he may be on the winning side of it against top guys. Like, it wasn't that long ago he put Curtis Blades to sleep, and Curtis Blades is knocking on the door of a title right. shot. Like, Derek Lewis is fine. These are the type of fights he's in. Um, I'll watch him again. I'll watch him over and over and over. No, he's Eric the man. Lewis is awesome. He's incredibly entertaining. You know what was my big takeaway from the whole event? Like just seeing Lewis's walkout, Moreno's walkout, then looking at the gate, 4.5 million, 21st straight sellout for the UFC. They are so blazing hot right now. Like yeah. the UFC can do no wrong in terms of their business. And the stars are getting over. I mean, like all of this... Uh uh, the London event right before yeah. was the most profitable fight night they've ever had it's in, his, in company history. The last time they went to Dallas, which was uh, Till Woodley, it did a, a little more. Jedi put this out. Shout out Jedi Goodman, like a little over two million. The gate yeah. and and the the uh, the the attendance was like this was like nineteen plus. Tennis was like 14 plus, if memory serves me correctly. Like everything they do, they could go to any. And and by the way, it's not like the cards are that much better than they were two, three years ago in terms of talent, in terms of depth. It's just the brand. It's 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 a mix of things. The ESPN deal has been gigantic for them. They are now like in the in the mainstream 
consciousness. They're all over the place around the bottom line. People are talking about them. The coverage is great. Dot com covers them more, blah, 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 blah. So that's number one. Number two, the rise of things like DraftKings and all these other, uh, you know, I think now they're, Massachusetts has just announced today that it's going to be legal. Yeah. So I think that's 36 states, if I read that correctly. Um, so like the rise of that has made it huge. The pandemic gamble paid off. It, it worked. They had like a three month, you know, runway there where there was nothing else going on in terms of American sports. It's just on fire right now. Yeah. Really, really impressive. And the events are mostly delivering, you know, like it was, it was a good event on Saturday night and the momentum will continue into Usman. Well, I mean, there's other fights between them, but the next big, big opportunity right. is Usman Edwards. Now let's well, talk Usman about this weekend too. Tough finales. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> God. Have you watched a second of tough? Uh, I'm going to get around to it. Have, as of right this second, Monday, August 1st, 1.31 p.m. Eastern, have you watched one second of Tough? No. Nope. I have not watched a millisecond. I don't even watch when a clip is online, when I see something on Twitter. <laughs> I'll watch that. Avoid and I'll, it? I will actively avoid it. I've seen the clips. <laughs> the basketball jerseys are sick. I'll watch that, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll read A.K. Lee's e -ca uh, recap for MMA fighting, and, and that's it. A.K. Lee that's deserves that. 10 bonuses for having to watch that. In your previous job, you had to watch it a lot, right? I watched every single episode last season? Yeah, last season. How I bad was every it? Every single episode. Come on. It's very formulaic. It's just like not content that I would consume. Wow. Talk about the UFC being on fire. Tough. Tough as well, at its peak. Well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> all of the content. It's like they can't get enough content on Plus. Okay, so then the big one was... We did, you know, we did win, but uh, I felt for you and your boy KKFGC. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us the emotions. Uh, what was man. going on? Started off a little slow, down two. Started off slow, but then down third two round, one judge. Did yeah. you see the scorecard that came out? Yeah. Well, I just the way I was watching it. I know the way yeah. you were watching it. I actually thought the same thing. I thought he was down two, but then he comes alive in the third round. I mean, he starts really looking good. Uh, definitely got out of the seat when uh, you know he had Brandon Moreno down, and you know he's delivering the blows that cu that cuts him open right there. Uh, yeah, I was getting excited. You know, I was like, all right, take the momentum from the from the third into the fourth. And then, you know, in the final minute of the third round, he, he gets the liver shot. And it's just like, you knew from the look on his face, you knew from the way his body reacted that it was over. Like, the, there was there was nothing he could do. I mean, it was just a perfectly placed shot by Brandon Moreno. Uh, and yeah, that was it. It was a bummer, man. It was a bummer. The way he was heating up, too, and it just to end just like that. Uh, yeah, I was definitely bummed. I don't know what to do with the picture now. Now this is from two fights ago. You, you're done with it? No, I mean, I like I. I don't no, know. It's just one fight ago. That's the Askarov fight, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just one fight ago. Well, it's not his last fight. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, you got to ride with your guy. You keep I mean, it up I, there until he I gets mean, another I'm, title I'm shot. I'm gonna still ride with him. What do we think? Roy Val next or something? For him? Yeah. I haven't really looked at the uh, Pan Pantoja. It seems like. No. I mean, Pantoja has lost to Figueredo. People seem to forget forget uh, that. Yeah, I know, but yeah, come on. Though. I feel like he's gonna wait now. So you you guys talked about walkouts. Derek Lewis, Pantoja, biggest bet of the night for me was Pantoja. And the second he walked out to many men, I mean, you might as well cash at that point. <laughs> he I was like, it. this is done, bro. He this is. It. I mean, he's high fiving guys. He was walking out there high fiving guys like the fight was already over. He made it look easy. Many men is is got to be a top tier walkout song so when you're about to go get into a fight when you're about to go choke someone out in the first round. Uh, what about Alex Perez? What do you mean? Oh, Kai Kara France, Alex yeah. Perez. Oh, as a fight. Yeah, Perez. I think Perez or Roy Val would be a good fight. I think Pantoja is going to sit on the sidelines till Moreno Figueroa I, four happens. I'll take literally like this is one of those. Anybody who's willing to fight Kai in Australia, that's the answer. Oh, yeah. Whoever yeah. fights Kai in Australia, oh. I don't care. Step MMA up. MMA hour, live show outside of Marvel Stadium. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. But yeah, Kai on set. I'll do the interview. You sit that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, the, I mean, he would have to return. It would be first quarter. That's what they're shooting for. All those guys need to be on that card. Um, yeah. Moreno is such a star. Holy crap. Like, Stud, this is stole, the guy. Everything. When they put him in Arizona, when they put him in Texas, when they put him in these markets, obviously with a lot of uh, Hispanic fans in attendance, it's so smart. Obviously, the, the number one thing they could do is put him in Mexico. They're not going to Mexico anytime soon. This is the next best thing. We're, yeah, Yair Rodriguez sitting in the front row going absolute <laughs> ape shit over there. Crap. Dude, Yair Rodriguez, I've never I don't know if I've ever seen a fighter. I mean, they're friends, they're not training partners, that happy, that excited. It was beautiful to watch. And did you notice he's sitting like three people away from the city kickboxing guys? Yeah. So I don't know if part of that was like sticking it to Volk, because you know, they've got their little thing. 
I don't think so. He's jumping think around was, like crazy. I, I think it was just <laughs> genuine joy. I think Sweet. he's probably happier for that than his own win. Like I think it was that beautiful. Is, that is. We have it right. We have yeah, it. GC? We have the video. Yeah. Uh, the one of. Uh, the dude jumping around. Because Crazy. also, the city kickboxing guys, if Kai won, would have been doing the exact same thing. So I don't think it was anything like gamesmanship in, in that regard. I think they were just, that was pure joy from somebody who, who loves somebody, who saw them achieve something special. I love the camaraderie between those city kickboxing guys. This is the footage right here, courtesy of uh, look UFC at the white Espanol. Shirt right yeah. White shirt guy, I don't know if white shirt guy is his fr Look at that. He's like oh, about man. to do a mosh pit thingy there. He's like. Take I mean, down when, it's the, your, when it's your boy, like getting a a win like that, yeah, it, like it hypes you up, man. Let me see it again. Let me see it again because the white shirt guy is the most interesting guy. We were trying to debate: are they friends looks, or are they he not looks friends? Angry. He, he no, looks I think angry. he's trying to be like, yo, man, could you just chill out for a second? White shirt guy, but like, there's like, no yo, smile at all. Look at that. There's no smile. Because there's a point where he hits him and then he kind of like, it's like, yo, yo, <laughs> dude. Come on, man. By the way, like, little, the, the side glances he keeps making. Yeah, yeah, side yeah, yeah. I think because he's worried he's going to do something with Volk. Oh, that would be crazy. A uh, little Easter egg. Right behind them is AEW star Keith Lee, the the huge guy. Yeah. Right behind him, who was also pretty much, pumped up. I mean, he like yeah, he posted a picture with Volk on Instagram. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't think there's no, a but I think yeah. he just wants to fight, and he says Volk is you know going. Uh, you said you fight. saw pictures of Yair with the guy in the white shirt. I thought I did. Did I not? I don't know. I can't find any. Maybe I was wrong. Uh, can we? I, I know we're far removed from this, but. Brandon Moreno was like cut from the UFC. Oh, it's incredible. And then came back and has now been not only just one of the like hottest fighters in, in the sport, but like exciting. Like every single time Brandon Moreno's in a fight, it's a can't miss fight. The dude has completely flipped his career around. 100%. Um, and it, it's an incredible, it really is like a very incredible, like very unique story for also, a guy. And I think he was like the last pick on Tough, too. Yep. There's just so many things. Um, that have completely flipped in his career. So, the Brandon post Moreno. fight, not today, not tomorrow, like, but one day, yeah. thing is like one of the most. I mean, he's still wearing Reebok in that video. Like, right, that's, that's he lost. He lost that fight and was talking about he's going to be a champion. He was in Legend. World Fighting Federation in 2016. Gets signed to the UFC. Beats Luis Smolka. Beats. Ryan Benoit beats Dustin Ortiz, then loses to Sergio Pettis in Mexico, then loses to Alexandre Pantoja in Chile, and then gets cut, and then goes to LFA and wins their flyaway title, and then returns to the UFC, um, and then has this amazing run. Uh, first fight back in the UFC, Oscar Oscarov. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fights him to a, him draw. to a draw. Yeah. Yeah. In Mexico, then the Kai Kai France fight, and then just works his way up. It's an amazing story. And 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 this was all also when they were going to get rid of the whole division. Now Flyweight yeah. is on fire. Pantoja on the card. Um, just like it, it, Schnell a couple of weeks ago on Long Island was incredible. Flyweight is on fire. Everything was great about it. I will say, though, and I'll say this to him when he joins us in about 22 minutes, Brandon Moreno, our first guest of the day, and then still to come, Davis and Figueredo. Um, also, at some point today, there's going to be Massive breaking news. I just want to let everyone know at some point today, there'll be breaking news. There will be breaking news. Yeah, it's kind of like a thing where you have to play it if I say those words. Yeah. Um, but I thought post-fight, it was a bit of a fumble because the UFC doesn't do that sort of thing anymore. They hardly ever bring in guys. Mm. Figgy's looking great there with that sweater. He's got the belt. He brings the belt. <laughs> Can I just talk about this? Hold on. The sweater I know was you're fantastic. getting to a serious point. What is it with the sweater? I don't know. It was a normal sweater. No, it was great. This is two times. It was a nice sweater. sweater. There was something about it. I don't know what was on it. What was Best it like? Sweater ever. What was it like? A cat or something? Was what was it? A bear. It was a nice thought. design. A panther. It's a sweater. It was cool. And he's sitting there with the belt, which has to be annoying too. You're just sitting there with the belt the whole time. And they don't do this a lot. And yeah. I was like, you got to do it for this fight. Wait, you got to do the it. Last one, the Brock and DC. It's been a while. Brock, DC. Of course, they used to do it all the time. There it is. Yeah, this isn't the best picture of the sweater, but uh, it looks like some, <laughs> some sort a of cool black sweater. Guy. I don't know. He just yeah, looked I mean, awesome. That's amazing. I've never seen it. How eyebrows, much do you think he... Does, he, does he always do the red eyebrows with the, no. uh, with the God of War thing? I feel like that's new. Not always. That is new. How much do you think he weighs on Saturday? <laughs> 150, 155 maybe. Yeah. Some people were saying 170, 180. I think that's, oh, a, little come on. that's a little mean. 180? It's Who very mean. That's crazy. Ali, who's morning. texting you? That's crazy. People Once. people were saying it. Anyway, then he yeah. comes in, and you could see the look on his face. Like, the guy was ready to throw down. Again, not throw down physically, but verbally. If you're going to come in, if we're going to have this moment, eh, Brandon, not the time to be, you know, good dad. Let's just be like, yo, man, 
I don't like you, you don't like me, we'll forget. That's it. You but, need a good reason, though, right? Uh, is his daughter really watching at 10 o'clock at night? No. no, but he wants to be an example for her. I mean, for any for context, for people who missed it, after the fight, in the in the post-fight scrum, he said he thought about going buck wild. He thought yes. about letting the leash I wanted off, buck wild. And he thought about the fact that one day my daughter's going to look at this, or even now my daughter's going to look at this. She's old enough now. I think he said eight. Um, and he doesn't want her to see her dad being stupid on TV, acting it doesn't mean you have to be stupid. Just be like, yo, man, I'm I, not impressed with you. I kind of agree with you that I think the heat would have sold better at the same time. I'm not saying push him. I know, I know what you're saying. You you're build it up, build, it, build up. it up. Those three fights have been so good. This story is so good. I think no matter a little what, juice. I'm I'm with you. I think I lean that way for sure. But man, those three fights were so good. Like he walks in. Oh, are you really gonna defend the belt? I mean, top of the broadcast, you have Joe Rogan just completely shitting on Figueroa, being like, "This is the real flyweight fight. He isn't coming down." Like what? You always wonder in those situations, is Rogan being told to say that? Is he just coming up with this on his own? Is he carrying yeah. someone's watch? I don't know. And then I know Figueredo responded to it yeah, in his little scrum. Yeah. Um, and he seems determined now to fight at 25. He seems like he is, uh, you know, going to make the weight. He says, just watch me, all this stuff. He just says, are you, oh, you're looking a little bit doughy there. You're going to really, like, just poke the bear. I don't know. Give me something. You can call him fat and move on. Is that what you say? <laughs> I don't know. Something. You just want something. Yeah. I, I wanted know. something that they could play in the package. These two guys, I mean, how many times have people fought four times for a title? Never. Guess what? Never. They've never fought four times for but a title. But isn't that enough? Is that enough? I just wanted something. And then you see Dana saying afterwards that it was uncomfortable. I didn't think it was uncomfortable. In fact, I, I thought it was like too friendly. Well, I, I think it's, I, I'll say this. Or disrespectful, it seemed, he said. It seemed a little more impromptu than the past ones. Like, it seemed a little bit more like they were wanting to cut to Davison, and then he was like, let's go do Yo, they, this. They almost stopped Davison from coming into the that, cage. That's what I'm saying. Guy. So I do think you, Dana was probably thinking, like, this is Brandon's moment. Do we want Davison in the cage? Now, as you've pointed out, they've done this many times before. It's, it's not, you know, it's part of the show. It's part of the theater. But I don't have, I don't have a huge problem with it. But I w I'll say this. Here's what I'll say. For a casual audience, if you're trying to sell this pay-per-view, this next pay-per-view that they're going to be on to fans, pushing, shoving, yelling, screaming, fat boy this, that would have sold it to them. Mm -hmm. For the hardcores, like, if you've seen any one of those first three fights, it you're you're in already. Though These two make magic when, when they step in the cage together. Do you think the UFC saw your tweet? That's why they let him in the cage. 100%. <laughs> they they have a, you know, because they have that feed where they put the tweets up on the screen, yeah, and they have yeah, a separate yeah. feed for me just to see, yeah, yeah. take the temperature of the actual well, people. What's the old nose saying? Yeah, 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 I saw yeah. your tweet, and then they jumped in the cage. I, I was mean, like, wow. Th I think, thank you honestly, for mentioning that, by the way. I appreciate it. If he showed up in a different sweater, they might not have let him in, but the, was... the strength on the strength of the sweater. Well, the best was when they cut to the shot of him trying to convince a security guard to get into the cage. I mean, like, could we not have cut to that shot there? What, you know, it should have been what a little cat is it on there? You're going to have to ask him. Later. Yeah, Panther. So uh, he did put out like eight Instagram stories in a row tagging me. And I thought it was him Whoa. saying like, Helwani, yes, uh, I saw your message. Uh, I, I, I thought he was going to say something like, uh, you know, I'm not coming on your show, but thank you to Guilherme. This is what he said. I'll be talking to Ariel Helwani today and Brandon Moreno will also be on this live show as well. And I think it's going to be fire. I'm not his friend. I know we still have a war to do and I can't be friends with him. See, so I'm talking about Figgy. Figgy gets the art of promotion. Anyway, that, I added Whoa. that, not him. Um, <laughs> I can't be friends with him because he's done something to me that's unforgettable. Whoa. Uh, maybe we can be friends after this fight, but before we have this fight, watch it. The war is about to begin. Today is going to be the first contact we have since we spoke inside the article. By the way, did someone tell him that they're going to be on together? Because yeah, now yeah, I'm starting no to regret the, not booking them together. <laughs> he's on at three. I know. He's on at two. Don't tell sure. anyone. Let, let people believe that. I respected him. It was his moment, and now I have him as a rival. We'll fight and put on a show for you guys. I won't call him names, but won't be friends either. It's time to work. That's what I'm talking about. A little fire, Figgy. Yeah, Fig Figgy definitely wrote all that for sure. No, no, no. He, no. he spoke it. He said it. He said it. And then Guillermo translated it. You hater. He says it into the camera. Well, he actually posted it without tagging you all eight videos and then... Did it again? posted it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the, uh, the social him. game is... Oh, I amazing. love that guy. I love that guy. So we're getting that. And then uh, it looks to me, you know, I, I reached out to Valentina yesterday... I said, what do you think? I saw her little dicey, dicey tweet. Mm -hmm. She said oh, uh, something to the effect of, uh, what did she say? It looks like Amanda copied my game plan. Yeah, yeah, her yeah, style, yeah, yeah. Her style. Striking style. Striking style. I think she was talking about going southpaw, something like that. 
Anyway, uh, it was nice. And I said, I think it was last week, I felt like she all of a sudden went a little lukewarm on the idea. Like two interviews ago, it seemed like she was all in mm -hmm. on going up. Then the next time we spoke to her after the Long Island event, after Misha Tate loses, it seemed like she wasn't that into it. It felt like she was like, yeah, if they come to me. Yeah. Now I'm starting to feel like she's back into it. She's, But Valentina, very smart businesswoman. She's like, if they come to me, I'll consider it. So she's not tipping her hand, but even Dana at the post fight press conference is like, ooh, good idea. Like you thought of it for the first time. We haven't been talking about it for two years. <laughs> this is the time to make it. The gap is closing between her and the rest of the flyweights. Do it. Nunez getting up there in age. They, 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 they are both beatable at this point. You got to make the fight. It's the biggest fight. Valentina afterwards, have her go back down. There's no one at 35. Other than Caitlin Vieira, there's literally no one at 35 for Nunes to fight. And at 25, you have Grasso and Araujo coming up. You have Manon Fioro coming up. Let the winners of those two fights meet, buy some time, Santos. and then you do this at the end of the year. Let's go. Yeah, I, I'm 100%. Well, Santos is still going to be out for a while. She's got the broken orbital. What, yep. you, uh, what she said to you, though, last the, in the, the last conversation, not the one from two times ago, was... Show me something, make it worth my while. I'll say Amanda Nunes showed something. I'd be I'd be more interested in in Amanda Nunes after that performance to show, hey, the ship is righted. That was a that was a blip. That was an aberration. Like now's the time I'm to make it. I'm back on track. I I'm, agree. I'm down Straight for Valentina down versus versus Amanda, but honestly, I don't think that's a a good fight for Valentina. I really don't. You're crazy. I really don't. You don't think Valentina can win that fight? I don't. The problem here, here's what I fear for Valentina. She's now a flyweight, right? And she's always been a small bantamweight. Uh, Nunes is a big gal and also looked great. Credit yeah. to her, yeah, her new team. Great. She was in great shape. I feel like, as crazy as it may sound, the size might actually be a bigger factor in this third fight than the second fight, especially if they try to do it quick. Like, obviously, they're not going to do it next month. And Valentina, I mean, excuse me, Amanda got pretty beat up in this fight. You see her afterwards. Yeah. Can't imagine how she looks today. Uh, obviously she won. There was no controversy, nothing. No. She's probably going to need some time. I don't see it happen. If they're going to Brazil, if it's true they're going to Brazil at some point, I doubt they go for a big pay-per-view this year because you've got the November MSG card and then typically they go December to Las Vegas. I could see them maybe going January to Brazil, some of the first quarter-ish. They've also got uh, Australia on the calendar. I would love to see a scenario where it's Amanda finally fighting in Brazil as champion again and... Uh, Maybe Figgy and Moreno in there. We'll see what happens with Oliveira, but this is the time to do a fight card like that. Let, let me ask you something as a point of comparison. Israel Adesanya going up to light heavyweight to fight Jan Blahovich after being a dominant champion in in his weight class. Did he lose momentum? No effect to his momentum. Like, how do you feel ultimately that experiment netted out? Didn't love it. I see. I could see a very similar scenario for Valentina. But there's, Go up. There's nothing going on. There's there's nothing going on right now. And she kind of won by the skin of her teeth in the last fight. And it sort of feels like the gap is is closing a little bit. Izzy was on some kind of roll, and I feel like it made him look a little more human. Even though it was 205. Tell you what, sounds exactly like the same story But here. isn't that what just happened against Tyler Santos? She looked pretty damn human in that fight. Fair, but I mean... A win Izzy didn't have a loss like that, or a win like that that was kind of viewed That's as a true. loss. That's true. At 85, yeah. he has not looked... Uh, the last, what, what, Gastelum? Like, when's the last time he looked like he was even in much peril? It's It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, I, I do also feel like uh, like going against Nunez, like, I feel like there is, uh, like, maybe, like, more at stake for the legacy of, like, Valentina. Like, if she can beat Nunez, like, I feel like that makes an argument for the GOAT, whereas Izzy went up and fight Jan. Like... There was no I, story there. I don't think Jan no, is that, the... That I agree. Like, it was nothing. Anyway, go. Here, here's right. the problem with that, though. It could also be the legacy of she now lost three times. True, okay, which makes it, like, solidified. It, there to be not great. even in the conversation. There to be great. Anymore. I like that. I like that. There to be I'm, great. Listen. There to be great in I think it's the. I think it's the most interesting and intriguing fight Valentina Shevchenko can get. Yeah. I don't think it's a good fight for her. I well, that's think all right. she don't. You that's it, all right. Are there odds for that yet? No. Uh, She'll be the dog, for sure. I would imagine. There she, are odds for her. For a potential Nunez Pena three, Nunez opening at minus seven hundred. Okay, that's fine. By the way, I don't see enough people talking about that. For the record, Valentina first, in my opinion. What I would I do is so. Valentina first, have Juliana fight someone else in the Bantamweight division. Not a terribly tough fight. I don't like the idea of Holly Holm. Holly Holm's on the last fight of her contract. If Holm beats Pena and walks mm -hmm. out, like what what happens mm -hmm. then? But you you fight a mid tier Bantamweight, you get her a win, and then she's right back in there. 
I always thought, believe it or not, I always thought they screwed Matt Serra by not doing the third GSP fight. I don't know why you can't have the third fight when it's, and by, and, and by the way, we have to update our, our stat about the person who loses the belt and the immediate rematch yeah, and all that stuff because Amanda go. was able to reverse that a little bit. But to me, you have Amanda fight Valentina, Juliana fights someone else, and then she fights the winner of that fight regardless of who it is because she could avenge a loss on either side. She has a loss to Valentina and now she has a loss to Amanda. Juliana should not be far away from getting another crack. I like, I like what you said. Go Valentina. And if and by the way, and if they don't do Valentina, if they don't do Valentina, if, if Valentina says, I want to stick around at 25, I like Grasso. Grasso looks tremendous on August 13th. I like it. It could be a big fight. Great for Latin America, whatever. Fine. I like Juliana Amanda 3 over Amanda and Caitlin Vieira. Caitlin Vieira, yeah. Juliana I, Amanda 3. Yeah. I'm, Why not? I'm, I'm mad at that. I mean, yeah, the, no, the no. one reason for why not is when you get 50 43 in a, in a championship fight, that's a rough. What's worse, 50 to 43 or stopping her? Yeah, no, you're right. She has a stoppage win over her. I think more people would lean on the side that that won't happen again versus, like, look, I think it's sellable. 100% I think it's sellable. I think it's, I think it's tough. Man, as a star. By the way, that nomination. picture of her with her daughter. I mean, I must have stared at that for an hour. I, that was incredible. Incredible stuff. I'd love to know. I didn't ask her this. I'd love to know if the daughter, if her daughter just did this on her own, if they talked about it beforehand. Like when you walk up there, just the visual of the daughter having her yeah. back and emulating her. We've never seen anything. We've seen kids go up there and whatnot, but we've never seen her so innocently, any child just walking behind mom, dad, yeah. and doing that. That was just beautiful. I hope she just did it naturally. Uh, yeah, whatever it was. It was great. It was tremendous. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. She's a star, and uh, I feel for her because Which, no one likes to lose that first title defense. I would be down for a third fight. Which is a bigger fight, the third fight with Pena or the third fight with oh, no. Valentina? Not Valentina. Valentina. Not Do you even. think there's a route yeah, to no the question. third fight? For Juliana? Yeah. Yeah, just win one fight. Just one in between. By the way, it's two scenarios. It's either, and, and to answer your point, like 100% it's the Valentina. Valentina. Fight. Of course. It's not even a question. But... Valentina, if I had the, the pencil, as they say in the business or the book, Valentina, Amanda three, end of the year, early next year, depending on if they're going to Brazil, Juliana fights someone else. Juliana wins. She gets the winner of that fight. No questions asked. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Greatest track ever. Uh, uh, someone like, uh, I don't know. I'm looking now. Like, I wouldn't do Caitlin Vieira. Uh, an Aspen lad. A Yana Kunitskaya. <laughs> what? 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 A Misha Tate. Hey, no, they're friends. That'd be a good story, though. Um, it kind of. Oh, I you're mean, saying for Pena? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I kind of. I thought I, you were saying for for Nunes. Nunes? If no, 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 no. I sorry, kind of be into the that. friend versus friend. Who's going to get a title shot? We're kind of propelling each other. I'd be into that. No, they're not going to do that. I don't think they'd do it, but I'd be into Now, that. if it's not Valentina and for whatever reason Juliana doesn't do it, then of course it's going to be Caitlin Vieira. I just don't think there's any momentum there. A lot of people thought that Vieira lost to Holly Holm. Yeah. I just don't see anything. You're right. The momentum in each division is kind of a little halted, right? Like yeah. there, there, there is a good opportunity to do it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. I hope now with Nunes as champion, I doubt it's the case. I hope she embraces being champion a little bit more. And uh, I don't know. I just feel like she's... Felt a, like she didn't? No. She doesn't like to do media. She doesn't like to put herself... She just shows up on fight week. I, I, I feel like she should be a much bigger star. Casey proposing Pena versus the Aldana Macy winner? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I don't know. I feel like... And also, what all, is that 145 title? Of, I mean, like, yeah, what are we going to do about that? Jeez. Just walking well, around with it? I feel like of all the champions, she she is one of the ones who like you just get to takes the responsibility. <laughs> when does what? she have to defend it? There's no yeah. rankings. Who is she going to do? I mean, this belt that I'm wearing here is more active than that Jeez. belt. I mean, it's like a little, right. I'm just saying. I think I think this week she said in a, in a media day or or press conference. She did. Yeah, she was going to leave the cage and tell Dana she wanted to go up. She wants to go up to the next to fight who. That's the thing. There's literally I don't know. no rankings. There There's are, no, there are no like, fighters in that division, so I don't know. what The, the only fight is Kayla. Well, it's not happening, oh, yeah. but yeah. By the way, who's going to PFL this uh, this Friday? It's in New York. Oh, is it? MAR outing? Maybe. Let's see. It'll be nice. Are we meeting at the Hulu Theater? 
That's where it's happening. On a Friday. It, it was going to... Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're working? No, I'm just curious. What, no, it was going to be a big weekend Friday. in New York. It was going to be Friday, PFL. We'll talk about this fight? Or like Saturday, fight MSG. Oh, yeah. We could talk the, about it. All the... Uh, it's a lot of drama. The drama? Yeah. A lot of drama. Uh, they said it was going to be 200. Then they wanted 205. Then they said no to 205. They being, being Rockman's team. Was, yeah. Yeah. Listen, from what I understand, uh, Jake was the one who was saying, like, let's just do it. And the team was like, okay, now it's getting a little crazy. In retrospect, it was probably a lot to ask a guy who had never fought under 220 as a pro to make 200, let alone 205. It's a huge bummer because now it's two dates at MSG that fell through. So it kind of hurts his stock there. And of course, Dana's going to take the shot and say that it, somehow blaming this on Jake's people and, and, and the shot is at Nikisa Badarian. Yeah. Nikisa Badarian, for those that don't know, and I feel like we've talked about this once before, was never an accountant at the UFC. He was the chief strategy officer, pretty big deal, for about four years, and then was the CFO of the UFC. And if you actually go back, because I did, and look at all the press releases and all the stories about when they sold the company for $4.025 billion. He was like the top name mentioned on the UFC side of things, like uh, in terms of like the advisor for getting this deal done. He wasn't the dude who was sitting there like, I don't know what an accountant would do at a company like that. Accounting, yeah. That's, that's, his, that's his lone shot. And I think Dana views it as somewhat insulting or like a betrayal that this guy who used to work for the company is is going against him or even daring to be in the business of of fighting lest we forget Dana White was a bellman Dana White was a was a Thai bow instructor like he, he was a part-time MMA manager teaching you know 45 year old women how to throw kicks and punches if anyone actually knows more about the fight business it's this guy who was in the room for four years and then went to work for Fertitta for two years before getting into all of this. Cannot argue with anything you said there. 100% truth. I would push back on the idea that like that's all that, that it's just because he's daring to to go. Jake Paul, his athlete who he is 100%. managing is taking direct shots at Dana White. It's not just passive like he's yeah. daring to be in business. They are actively taking shots at UFC and Dana White, which is hey, I'm good with that. Yeah. Like that that's okay. That's how you do competition. Um but yeah, they're they're coming for him. Clearly. And he is, and he is firing back. Sure, but the accountant line, the yeah, accountant he, thing he is very Saturday night personal. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, uh, but it, it's such a weird insult. Yeah, what did he say? Just because you were an accountant here for a few months yeah. doesn't mean it's, you can do it's the. It's basically fighting. a who the fuck is that guy? Fight. That's that's right. what it is. He's he's trying to minimize. Yeah, it's like right, a right, fifth grade right. course, yeah. playground yeah. insult. Yeah, I agree. Just I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it works. We you does know. it work? Does, for, does anyone view like? By the way, but, I'm super impressed by account, accountants. I can never do what an accountant does. Like, I know many. I, I have a few friends. They're very smart people. You you know more than the person who's on the watching the YouTube stream. Sure. They don't they don't know these things. Of course, they're gonna be like, oh, the accountant. All right. I can't lie uh, until you just explained. All yeah, that. I thought he was. So just that's, an accountant. that's you really thought it, he was. It works. Like, Come. It works. No, this dude was in there. He was in the mix. Now, I can to your point, 100. percent I can understand why it's personal. It's just yeah. a weird line. And also, let's not pretend. Fights fall through all the time. I, I guess my thinking was, why was this not? This was not Jake Paul's fault or Jake Paul's team's fault. Not even close. The you the one thing you you said it, which is, could you have maybe picked an opponent who very clearly could have made weight? Sure, they picked a, a big fight that they thought would would propel him forward, and the fighter agreed to the terms and could not meet the terms. That's it's for me. It's very clear. It's clear as day. Right. He agreed to terms. The commission, Jake Paul's team, were willing to be flexible to a certain degree. He was so far outside of what those terms were, he could not meet them, and the, the fight dissolved. That That is as clear as day what happened, and it's not Jake Paul's fault. I think we now have to pivot. It's either, you see, the Nate thing is going to take too long to materialize because he's going to fight in September, and then there's going to be the three-month exclusive period and blah, 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 blah. I think we got to look at Anderson Silva. Oh, uh, that... I think we got How is this the consolation? That. That's what I don't understand. This should have been the fight all along. Just do it. Here's the problem with Anderson Silva. He's not a boxer. No, no, He's no. The boxer. problem with Anderson Silva is Anderson Silva has this contract with Triller that is very uh, restrictive. Okay. But can we can we finally end this like he's not a boxer talk? In fact, no, I would no. argue that Jake Paul at this point would much rather do business with somebody who's an MMA fighter than somebody who's a quote unquote boxer. The MMA guys he's have shown up. They've shown yeah. up. These are the problems yeah, what you get point. into when you're fighting a boxer. We don't need to prove anything about Jake Paul beating a boxer. Let's just see a fight. Yeah. Let's just see a fight at this point. And muzzle tough to Tyron Woodley, by the way, who showed up showed twice. Showed up twice. Once on two. I mean, the dude showed up. 
here's here's the other thing. There's a I, I, I think you said it in the text. Like there's a freaking huge bag just sitting there, and no one seems to want it. No one seems to want to fight this guy. Like even when this fell through, did you see Nobody. anyone on Twitter being like, "I'll fight you on seven days' notice. I will fight." Uh, did anyone say that? There was like a few, but it was nobody like who was going to really get yeah. to fight. Scared of him. Like me? Like someone like me saying it? <laughs> I think Chael tried to like a Chael? mini mini. I'd be down for that. Him. I'd be down for that in a second. <laughs> but I mean, Woodley. Nobody who would wants need to a build up guy? to a Chael uh, no, Jake free. Paul fight? Give Chael seven days. Nobody wants to fight this guy, and and I don't buy that it's because they're scared of him. But like, they should be There's running a lot, toward this but fight. Boy, but I don't think they're scared of him. But like. The alter, like to lose to him is sure. a reputation yeah, on the line. Yeah, Just ask, ask Grin and Woodley. Yeah. No. I mean, especially if you're an unknown, like six or seven. Askren and Woodley boxer. are doing all right, I think. Yeah. I think they did okay on the exchange. Woodley well, got engaged today. Oh, congratulations, congrats. Yeah. Tyrone. One of, one of my favorites, Legend. one of my all time favorites on the show. Yeah, it's such a bummer. But I, I, I wonder what the play is here S- because the- somebody grabbed the bull by the horns, grabbed the brass ring. I think they say that in WWE. Yes. Look for an opportunity to get a fight with Jake Paul. It's not hard. Do something. Somebody just grab grab this this bag that he's offering and get a, and get the fight. It's out there. But Jake Paul's just waiting. Confirmed off. 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 All right. I will be home. Uh, I'll be we at talk- Field. Oh wow. Okay. Braves Mets. <laughs> Uh, we could talk more about this uh, later on. We'll get to your picks later on as well. But for now, let's talk to some royalty. We spoke to him before the fight. He said he'd be back with the belt. He is a man of his word. He's the new UFC interim flyweight champion. He is the pride of Mexico. He is the assassin baby. He's the one and only Brandon Moreno. There he is, my guy, Brandon. How are you? Como estas? <laughs> What's up, man? Nice Spanish. Amazing, brother. You know, uh, right now uh, I'm here in the the Performance Institute. Uh, I, I went to I jumped to the to the ice bath to try to recover myself uh, quickly, and nothing, man. Here, so uh, very happy. <laughs> Congratulations. How are you feeling? I see the eye, obviously a little banged up. How are you? How's your body feeling? Uh, in general, my my body feels fine. It's just obviously my eye and uh, my food with uh, for for the you know the last kick. It hurts so much, <laughs> but I mean, I prefer that kind of pain, how, obviously. How many stitches there? I, I think uh, the, the doctor put um, 10 stitches. Okay. And and you injured your foot when you hit him in the uh, the liver there with that last kick? Um, you know what? I mean, maybe no, it was not the, 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 the last kick because I, I, I already watched the fight like, like twice. Uh, so I throw like in total like three or four kicks to the same area. Uh, so maybe yeah, maybe the last one was the 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 the, the last drop in, in the glass. But yeah, for for the foot for the kick, sorry, definitely. So just going backwards, if we can, Brandon, how did you feel that week in Dallas? You know, new team, a lot was made of you going to Cannon City and and whatnot. You're fighting this guy. You're trying to get the belt back to get to the undisputed. The whole week, how did it go for you leading up to Saturday? You know, I, I, th- I think in five weeks, I was very, very, very good, very relaxed and, and like very confident I can, I can get the victory. But all, everything you're saying right now, like I, I feel all that pressure like before, you know, like all the, the new stuff, all the, the new style, all the, the decisions, the frustration, the, you know, I lost my title. All that things wasn't my mind, brother. And uh, this training camp was hard for me talking about my mind, you know, the, the battlefield of my mind was like always in, in, in constant uh, movement. But in five weeks, last week, I, I feel amazing, you know, like, hey, you know what? It's time to do it, man. It's time to do it. It's time to, to make it history again. And, and I did it. <laughs> uh, were you doubting yourself? Were you questioning yourself? What was going on in your mind in the training camp? Yeah, of course, man. I had 100%, like a lot of questions, like, hey, Hey, I, I thought they the, the right decisions or not, you know, I'm doing the, 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 the things well or not, you know, everything was new, everything like new system, you know, new goals, James and everything. Obviously, I, I had a lot of questions, but with the pass of the time, with the pass of the training camp, I, I, st- I started to believe and, uh, and believe like everything was, was right and, and, and I was doing the, the right things to, to get the title back. I, I saw the interview with DC and you, and uh, he was saying how Kansas City sucks. Do you do you feel that way about Kansas City? I mean, it seems like a nice man, place. I don't say that. He said man, that. How are you? 
how you believe it? DC is always joking and always making fun of everybody. <laughs> Not no, true. I like I like this thing, man. It's a, I mean, definitely it's, 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 it's very calm, you know. But I mean, I'm from Tijuana, and Tijuana is a desert. And right now I'm living in Vegas, and Vegas is another desert too. So, um, you know, watch a different view, like a lot of grass, a lot of green, a lot of trees. Uh, you know, was amazing, uh, was amazing for me. And Kansas City barbecue is delicious. Yes, it is. Okay? Delicious. I don't know Dallas barbecue. I don't know Louisiana barbecue. But Kansas City Barbecue is really good. Amen. Um, so how did you feel about the first two rounds? I, I thought you won the first two rounds. I know some of the judges felt differently. But going into the third, how did you feel about how the fight was going? You know what? Um, I watched, I mean, again, I watched the fight already like twice or, or three times. I don't, I don't remember. But yeah, um, I, I feel like I won the, the first one and second round. But I, I'm, I completely agree. Um, the tier one is, is started very bad for me because the uh, you know guy made the counter with the kick. They connect connect uh, the elbow and man, I I say this before and I have like a lot of pictures in my social media. I had a, a cut in the same right spot, man. A cut to like two weeks ago. So man, what a precision of Kaikara France to connect the elbow in the same spot. But, but okay, so you know. I feel the cold. I feel very warm in this area. And I was trying to remember my feelings in that moment. I feel a little bit my mind uh, was a little bit disconnected of the fight after the cut, after the elbow. And I was, you know, watching the, the round, like uh, Kyle started to make uh, damage in that round. But my mentality was like, hey, at least I need to recover myself and I need to uh, finish strong at the end of the round just to, to be again, again in the fight, you know, again in the octagon. And I did it. And, you know, I started to work a little bit more the levels, the levels of my kicks. You know, I was trying to, to connect uh, his head uh, every single moment. I just changed the, the level to the, to, to the, to the middle kick and, and works. By the way, how did you originally cut it? I was doing a kind of light sparring with, with one of my training partners in, in Kansas. And everything was fine. I mean, the guy don't, don't was like an asshole and throw like very hard. Just the guy connect very well, very well, and was a little, a little, little cut right here. I, I, there in Kansas, uh, uh, one doctor put me just like three, three stitches in total because it was small. But man, I mean, that precision of Kai and you know to go straight there to the spot, you know, to the place, <laughs> you know. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> did, did, did you think that he actually went for it, like that he was targeting it? No, no, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Just, I mean, the guy threw the elbow and was, uh, and was the elbow right there. Did you think that he was a much different fighter, a much better fighter, an improved fighter since you fought him in 2019? I think he was a little bit more smarter. Obviously, uh, you know, it, it's funny because watching the fight, I, I saw in the, in the first round when, when the round ends, he he was like walking behind me. I I, I don't see that. <laughs> it was funny when I, when I see that in in the repetition. Uh, but yeah, he was like he has more confidence, but at the same time he has uh, more uh, smart, trying to use more experience, and that make me uh, feel lose a little bit the, the distance. Uh, the, the same in the in the third round when I when my mind was like in another place after the the the, the elbow. Uh, there was a clip that was posted of uh, James Krause talking to you. I think it was between the second and third round where he tells you to go for the hook and then the, the kick to the body. Was that a specific sequence that you guys worked on for this fight? Uh, but, uh, the, the, sequence, the sequence was, yes, was the, was the follow, the, the, follow uh, the punch with the kick. So uh, we was working, you know, in, in the hook. We were working in, uh, in, the, in the right hand too. So yeah, man, that was was part of the plan, and uh, at the same time, it, you know, just the plan was like, hey, just explode all my abilities, man. Like, don't be just the the boxer of the division. Like, do more, man. You have the ability to throw kicks. You have the ability to to, to throw the knees, the the elbows, everything. So let's use everything. What do you like so now that you've had a fight under your belt with him? What makes James such a great coach? 
I mean, the guy is very passionate. He put a lot of passion on the work, even just enough passion, you know. And he's very smart, and he's, he's always what like again watching fights, trying to to improve uh, your abilities like like an athlete. And and that's it, man. He's a hard worker as, as as me, and you know, have people around you who who want the same the same goals and you. It's like it's, that's magic. You can make magic with that. Uh, when you landed that kick. What, what does that feel like for someone who's never been in that situation before? When you hit someone and then there's that a bit delayed reaction and then they crumble down and you know, this is my chance. Because even when you're watching it, it doesn't look like it like hits flush. Like it's almost like grazing a little bit and it's so painful. What does it feel like for you to land a kick like that in that moment? Man, that kick, I, I throw every single kick with all my hair, man. And uh, yes, I throw... And, I I thought I I think he was thinking I wanted to throw the 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 kick to the to the head mm. and again I changed I changed the level of the kick I went to the liver and I connect my man I put all my hair in that kick and I, it works I mean right now my leg my my foot sucks man wow hurt it hurts too much <laughs> you need but, crutches uh, it, it's it's normal huh you need crutches to walk. Nah, 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 okay. nah, no, 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 like that, but definitely hurts. <laughs> so you've won the undisputed belt before. Now you win the interim title. Can you compare how this one felt as opposed to when you won the belt? Like, does this feel the same or will you only feel that feeling again once you win the undisputed title? Uh, man, the, the first time is unforgettable, man. The first time is unforgettable. Obviously, the first time... Uh, with the, the fucking crazy viral speech and all, uh, all of the things uh, makes everything very special. But this one is very special, special too in, in my in my soul because con- confirm uh, to me like like I'm not real champion. I re- you know and and it's crazy how uh, this works because when I fought against Kaikara France the first time, I tried to to show the world I deserve to be in the company, right? And in this fight. Against Kaikara France, the second one, I, I I was like trying to show to the world I deserve to be the best, you mm. know, in the division. I, I I deserve to be the world the world champion of the world, the world champion of the world. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man, a, um, a lot of uh, different feelings. These ones give me a lot of peace in my soul, man. Wow, that, that's so beautifully said. The first time. You wanted to show that you deserve to be in the company. The second time, you want to show that you deserve to be the best in the world. I love that, and it speaks to your journey. Like, do you are you? I don't know if you're locked in or not, but the crowd reaction when you come out, like you're a superstar, Brandon. These people love you. Like, flyweights don't usually historically get this type of reaction in the UFC. Not even Demetrius Johnson, the greatest of all time, was getting reactions like this. Are you aware of what is going on around you as you're walking out? Do you hear the pop, or are you so focused that it all just feels like noise? No, I mean, of course, man, I was, I was hearing, I mean, maybe, you know, with it, because when you start your career, for example, you don't hear nothing, man. You just go in automatic, trying to throw punches, and that's it. Right now, I, I have the kind of this, uh, obviously, experience to, to put more attention on, in the, in details. I was, I was like hearing all the people that like, saying like, si, sí, se puede, se puede, or I, I, I had the opportunity to watch. It, it, with this part of my eye, they, they wave in the in the in the crowd. Man, that moment was crazy. It was uh was amazing. So I don't, man, again, I don't, I don't may I don't know if I'm a superstar. Just I'm just trying to to enjoy uh, my life, to enjoy my work, and I'm so grateful the 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 people can see that and uh, they can feel identified with my with my my purpose in life. Why do you think people like you so much? Like everyone loves you. You're you're so beloved, and when you come out, it's getting bigger and bigger. Why do you think you have this connection with people? Man, because I do my 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 job with my hair, man. I I, I promise. Uh, the people maybe can think like, oh, this guy is lay is lying, but when he says he's not doing this for for money or he he's not doing this for fame or whatever, but man. I promise I, I, I'm not doing uh, this for 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 money or fame or whatever. Again, and I said this before, and I want to say it again, like, man, I I love money. I but don't don't 
don't be confused. I love money. I love to, to buy sometimes stupid shit. I love the cars. I love my toys. I love my Legos, my Funkos. But, man, I love, I, I do this just for kids because I love it. When did you realize that Davison was sitting there? Because it seemed to me like you were and looking like, for him, right? You were looking for him in the post-fight interview. You wanted to address him. Am I right? Yeah, because I, I knew he was there. Uh, I, I saw him in the in the uh, uh, lobby in the hotel like two days ago. Oh, I was like fucking cutting weight, and he was there in the in the lobby. So okay, I know they are expecting a fucking show here. So that's why I was like trying to find him. Did you say anything to him, or did he say anything to you when you saw him in the lobby? No, no, no. I was man. I promise. I was like cutting, literal cutting weight. I was going uh, to the place when the UFC had the scale to check my weight, and I was like fucking in 120, 127, something like that. I don't know. In that moment, I was 126, so I was like on point with my with my cut. Uh, did you see him sitting there with the belt? And if so, what did you think that he brought the belt to the event? I uh, know. I don't. I don't. I don't see. I don't see that. No, but now, but like, I, but now yeah. I, I see like uh, videos in social media. He was like uh, in the in the backstage and whatever. I almost watching him in, in the backstage when I arrived to the arena. So I, I knew he was there. But him bringing the belt to the uh, event did did that annoy you? Did that bother you? What did you What did you think of that? Oh no, I, I don't care, man. I mean, you know, the, he's the champion, so I understand. So I was saying this, we were talking about it before you came on. So, you know, I, I say everything that, you know, I, I think I thought it was an incredible night for you. Amazing. But I wanted, you know, everyone wanted something there. We wanted to, and then you were, you were so nice to him and it was like a nice moment. Just something like a, some sort of friction. That's what the world wants, right? They, they, they want Man. the friction. Were you going to do, when did you do <laughs> Why did you do it? I Tell was us. freaking ready. Come on. Throw all my shit. Why did you I do it? I was fucking I was fucking ready to throw all my hate, all my fury there. Uh, but man, fuck man, I don't, I don't know. Something, co- something came to my, to my mind, man. Like, literally, I, what I said in the, in the interview was real. Uh, my, my, so my parents from Tijuana went to my house to take care of my, of my daughters, and uh, my, my old, oldest, my older. Uh, uh, daughter Madison, she, she has eight years old, so she understands right now everything. And, and if, if if she doesn't doesn't understand, um, she will she will in the future. So I knew. I mean, I had the the option for the world, for the for the show, for the money, for whatever to make some a, a big drama there, you know, and do a, a, something stupid with Davison in the in the octagon and make everybody crazy or I, I had the opportunity to take the, the, the long way and be respectful and just say like, man, I forgive you for all that shit you're saying to me and just please forgive me for if I did something bad against you, you feel bad. Uh, and I did it, man. I know maybe for the fans, for the, maybe it was not the, the best option, but like as a man, as a, a family guy, I just took the, the long way and that's it. You, you feel good about it? No regrets? I feel amazing, man. Right now, I'm enjoying my life very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think he You think he came in there ready to get into some sort of verbal? Yes. Alter- you could see it, right? <laughs> I, I see it. Yeah, I can see it. Like, he was like, like was ready to be part of this, man. He was ready to, part, to be part of the, of the freak show right there. But then I, I think... I think he had like a, some friend there who uh, who was like tra- translating everything. So he started to translate my, my words and he started to look very mo- like more calm and calm. Uh, afterwards, Dana said, you know what? I, I think it was disrespectful to you, to Brandon, to bring in Davison. It seemed like he regretted it a little bit. Did you feel like it was disrespectful? <sighs> in that in that moment, I, I, I don't I don't I don't think uh, about it. Uh, obviously, I, I wanted, for example, use all my time to uh, to to say that, and then I start speaking Spanish for my Mexican for my Mexican fans. That's the only thing I was like, oh, I, I hope they want to. I, I wanted to have uh, more time with the mic for for me, and you know, talk with my with my with my people in Mexico. But it it, it is what it is. Um, and I will have the the that opportunity in the future. 
I see him, he, he keeps calling you a racist. What have you said that he could view as racist? I, I don't know, maybe I missed something, but why does he keep saying this about you? Man, you, you don't know, you don't know, come on. What, what did you say? Man, I don't say nothing, but he say I, I did it. No, I mean, all the, all the things start with, well, my training partner, with Marcelo. Uh, he was, and even Don was in the last fight, was in the, in the second one when I won the title. Uh, I wa we went to the press conference and uh, my training partner Marcelo was using uh, uh, Instagram filters and in one of the filters uh, was a, a, a monkey and he put the filter on his face and somebody make a screenshot and make everything like uh, more dramatic so then the guy watched the, the, the picture and he say, hey, he put me that filter like a monkey and whatever. He's a racist. And I, I think uh, everything like was worse because uh, fucking Marcelo is from Argentina. And they uh, have like some conflict right. between Brazil and Argentina. But man, he was he was just playing, man. He was just playing. He was putting filter, filters to everybody. He put filters on me. He puts filters in Dana White. But man, <laughs> to be honest with you, was very funny in that moment, uh, but that, that that thing happened. Obviously, I, I was very angry because he was telling me like, "Hey, you're a racist!" Like, "Hey, man, come on, man!" I'm not. I, I mean, all the people know I'm not a racist, definitely. Actually, when I told when uh, somebody of the of my closest people hears uh, hears this history, they start to laugh because like, "Man, no way! You 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 you're not racist." Um, but like, man, okay. I just want to put my ego in other place and just say, uh, please forgive me. And that's it. <laughs> so that's what you mean when you say forgive. It's, it's about that. Nothing else. Yeah, man. I mean, I think that was the, the, the offensive thing I did against him. So I just want to say that. Uh, you know, so he, he's going to be on the show later in like half an hour from now. And he posted something on Instagram story. And I think he thought that you guys were going to be on at the same time, but I didn't want to do that to you. But he, he, he said something on Instagram earlier saying that he's going to be on the show with you today. He says, I think it's going to be fire. I'm not his friend. I know we still have a war to do and I can't be friends with him. I can't be friends with him because he's done something to me that's unforgettable. Maybe we can be friends after this fight, but before we have this fight, watch it. The war is about to begin. Today is going to be the first contact we have since we spoke inside the octagon. I respected him. It was his moment and now I have him as a rival. We'll fight and put on a show for you guys. I won't call him names, but we won't be friends either. It's time to work. What do you make of this statement from him? Man, Okay, <laughs> I I decide I decide uh, uh, just for me for my life. I mean, it's crazy because I understand my job. I understand what kind of sport I, 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 I I'm doing, but I decide to put the angry, the bad feelings uh, out of my life, man. <laughs> just watch this last fight this weekend against Hiker France. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say he's like my friend, but I mean, we were very professionals together. We put a lot of respect in, you know, in the, in the press conference, in the interviews, and we had an amazing fight even with that. So by, my, by myself, talking about myself, I decided to put all the angry, all the hate uh, out of me. If he want to keep going with those feelings, uh, I don't care, man. I don't. I don't care because at the end, with angry or not, I I going I want to put uh, on a show for the, the next fight. I want to get like completely my title back. And just to be clear, has he done anything to upset you? I know you say you put it to the side now, but in in the past, has he done anything that you were really bothered by? Man, the the, the lies, you know. The guy saying me things, uh, crying baby. It's not even fun, but I mean, he was saying that. <laughs> was even a, was even funny, <laughs> but I mean, all that all that shit, man. All that all that things was like a little bit uh, uncomfortable to me. Nothing like very crazy. Nothing like oh, I wanna I, I I'm gonna lose my mind for that. But like, I just wanna put the hate out. Uh, out. That's fair. It, okay, so before I let you go, in a perfect world, when do you want to return? When do you want this fourth fight to happen? So uh, Davidson say he, he will be 
uh, ready to fight in, in December. Um, uh, so I watch like everything. Like I, I, I have this fight in July. Uh, how many, how much, uh, how many months until December? Like, man, I'm ready. Let's go. I love, I love the, I love the schedule. So right now, I just my eye is just my my food, but uh, I'm I'm per, I'm perfect. I'm I'm healthy in general. So um, I I just I don't wanna like wait another fucking six months until my next fight, man. Yeah. I wanna I wanna fight before at the end of the year. So that's my my only. If you wanna go uh, to Brazil, we can fight in Brazil. We can fight in. In, in, in Russia, whatever, I don't care. I just want to fight before the end of the year. And it seemed like even at the beginning of the broadcast, Joe Rogan was saying, oh, he doesn't think that he's coming back down. He thinks that the winner of your fight with Kai was going to be the real champion. Do you believe that he will come down and make the weight? Do you have any doubt about this? Man, uh, that's, that's the question, man. Uh, again, I want to I want, I stop the, the trash talk or whatever, but with, I mean, real... Uh, being really honest uh, between us, uh, I mean, the, the, the guy looks very, very heavy. I don't know if he's weight right now, but uh, why should they, the, you know, the, the interview in the Octagon together? I mean, he looks in a whole different division than me. So I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. Maybe you can answer. You can ask, ask him that in the program uh, later. Yes. Okay. Uh, by the way, his sweater was really cool. Did you like his sweater? I thought it was nice. Sweater that he was wearing? No? <laughs> no comments about it. <laughs> Stop. I like you. You're taking the hair, the, the eyebrows. No, nothing? Uh, man, that, that says for me, man. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Are you going to buy yourself Lego something? Is something to celebrate? What are we going to do to celebrate? Ooh, man, it's so all. I think, man, I, I, I got a, a, a lot of gifts, man, so I have a lot of homework to do. I want to put, a, I, I want to uh, post a, a picture later, maybe, uh, in, my, in my, my office uh, uh, about all my new Lego sets. I have a, a lot, man. I have a lot to, to work to do. All right. Well, enjoy it, my friend. Thank you so much for the time. Congratulations. You're a star, Brandon. We appreciate it. And get well soon. I hope the eye and foot heal up soon. Thank you so much, brother. Have an amazing day, right? You too. Take care. There he is, the one and only Brandon Moreno, the new UFC interim flyweight champion, joining us from the uh, Performance Institute in, uh, no, not the, yes, the PI, the Performance Institute. I always get confused between the Performance Institute and the Performance Center. Performance Center is WWE in Orlando. Performance Institute is in Las Vegas. And so there you have it. He is, uh, he's taking the high road. Okay, now I take back everything I said, by the way. It is a nice story about the daughter watching. And uh, he wants to be, you know, he wants to be uh, positive. See, I, I don't agree with what Rick and, and GC were saying. Sometimes it's okay to be, you know, a positive influence on the kids. So it doesn't always have to be. <laughs> that's, that's the stance. They it, have. it doesn't always have to be, about, you know, fighting and all that stuff. You know, sometimes it's okay to take the high road, I think. I don't know about you guys, but I like that sort of what thing. What did you want him to say about the sweater? I actually really like the sweater. You guys didn't like it? No, I thought it was great. My significant other was like, oh, what's up with that sweater? I thought it was super cool. pulled it off. I wasn't... But what did you want Brandon to say? Like, oh, I hate that sweater. Oh, no, I wanted him fight. to say, like, I thought it was cool sweater. All right. Yeah. He pulled it off. He rocked it well. Uh, Frank, I don't know if you know this, but earlier in the show, I said that we're going to have some breaking news. Thank you. On today's program, breaking news. And a lot of people have been wondering, this has been one of the top stories of 2022. Roberto Soldich is one of the best fighters um, in the world. And I think that he was, you know, one of the best free agents to come along in the last few months, years. Welterweight and middleweight champion of KSW on some kind of role as of late, coming off that big win over Mamed Khalidov and a huge star for KSW. And we had seen him at different events, heard that he was at the Bellator show in Dublin, heard that he was at the UFC show as well, seen pictures and whatnot. And so a lot of people, especially the ones who have been following him and follow KSW, wondering where is Roberto Soldich going to go? And where is he going to sign? 
And so I think a lot of people, when they saw that he was going to be on today's program, were hoping that we'd get some kind of official announcement as to where he is going, who he is going to sign with. And so with that in mind, my friends, we have the answer to that question, but no one wants to hear me answer that question. Let's talk to the pride of Croatia himself. Let's talk to the man who I was just speaking about, Roberto Soldic, who was kind enough to join us. Roberto, my friend, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Finally, we, we meet each other. I, I appreciate it. It's good to have you. And uh, I've been watching you for a while and very impressed with what you've done. You've had a great career up until this point, And we've been wondering where you're going, who you're going to sign with. You are a free agent but you are now no longer a free agent. So I want to give you the floor, my friend, and then I'm going to ask, ask you a bunch of questions on the back end uh, after you make this announcement. So as I was saying, a lot of people are wondering where you would go double champion in KSW, middleweight and welterweight champion, and now you have an announcement. You have signed with someone. So my friend, make the announcement. The floor is yours. After so many solutions, uh, when, I, when I finished the KSW contract, so many solution, I uh, including UFC, one FC, and uh, I choose one FC for sure. I choose one FC because uh, it's biggest uh, martial arts in the world, you know. So they give me uh, opportunity to take uh, all the belts: kickboxing belts, world champion, Muay Thai world champion, MMA world champion. Uh, also boxing, boxing world champion. So this make me something uh, new, you know. I want to create something uh, uh, for my people, my my own, own legacy, you know. So I choose uh, 1FC for sure. And uh, after after I, I Singapore, I went to Singapore and uh, when I saw uh, all atmosphere, with uh, Mr. Chatri, how he treated the, the fighters' relationship, and uh, he gave me the best offer. He stay with me. You can be unique fighter, and I will give you all all chance to to take uh, different uh, belts from uh, combat sports. You know, so I I do I do all sport, and then I I want to do something different. You know, from the people. So. Finally, this this is the day I, I took the the one FC and uh, I see how uh, how happy fighters is there. So really good good uh, fighters, world world striking champions, world uh, grappling champions, uh, kickboxing. Uh, I I wanna do everything. I wanna I wanna took all belts from the. I wanna I wanna hold the belts from all combat sports. This nobody do this before, you know. So this is for me biggest challenge, you know. So I try to take it. I try. I try to take some some belts, you know, in different sport. And uh, you know, I, I people took the uh, how to say uh, people took the belts, but they don't show good in MMA. They they they, they don't show good in kickboxing. So. I'm mixed martial art. You know, I want to do everything. This is my goal. You know, I want to be a unique fighter. Well, this is massive and, news. Uh, yeah, and one uh, FC give me this opportunity to be to be different, something different in this sport. I have a lot in of questions. Sport. Congratulations on the news, Frank. That's some breaking news, I do believe. <laughs> breaking news: Roberto Soldic has now left KSW, so you're no longer the KSW middleweight and welterweight champion, right? You have vacated those titles, and you have now signed an exclusive multi-fight deal with one championship. This is massive news. You know why? Because I think a lot of people thought that you were going to go to the UFC. I didn't see anyone guess or predict that you were going to go to one championship, and you've just explained a little bit why you decided to choose one championship. Could I ask how difficult of a decision was this for you? It's for me a better opportunity. We know it's the biggest organization in the world because uh, you you know what what happened with UFC stars when they go to one FC they lose they they cannot take the one belt you know one FC belt. So this this make me difficult to to be a different fighter. I wanna I wanna I wanna this uh, this organization. I wanna try to take these belts 
where UFC fighters failed, you know, they, how to say, they, they don't show up there. You know, I see, when I watch the live one FC show, I see different, different striking game, grappling game. And uh, I, I went also in many UFC events. And, but one FC is something special, something different, something, uh, how to say, uh, true martial arts. You know? So I want to I wanna try this organization and I will, I will try to take all the belts, man. I, because before the KSW contract, my management and my gym, they invest in my, uh, I have four boxing fights. And they, I, I, I had a lot of fun to go in boxing, to go in MMA, you know, I, I do everything. And then after this, uh, after KSW contract, they say uh, we do maybe boxing. We have one Polish uh, champion and it took so long. So nothing happened. Only Mr. Chatry gave me this opportunity to be a true, true champion in martial arts. Like, you know, as I said, like, world champion kickboxing world champion muay thai nobody do this before so this is this is different for me and this make me fire and uh i i never i never seen this this before so i want to create my own legacy with my gym with my sparring partners with with uh, my management my my even uh, my brother ivan diakovic who who pushed me forward and he say you choose i have so many solutions to go uh, organization like UFC, you know, case to stay in KSW, but one FC give me the best solution and best offer. So I took this and uh, I'm grateful now. And I'm now one FC fighter. So I hope to take all the belts. Uh, I saw when you were at some of the UFC events, I even saw, I think you took a picture with uh, some of the executives how good of an offer did they offer you? Like, how hard was it to turn down whatever they were offering you? Or was it not even competitive with one championship's offer? Yeah, they offer good, but nothing serious. Okay. You know, one FC, one FC give me so many solutions. So I, I say, I want to do, I want to do kickboxing. They say, okay, you know, you, I want to do something, something new, some, my, I, UFC give me give me good offer, but uh, one FC is biggest martial arts in the world. Uh, you know, Eddie Alvarez also lose. You know, so Sage Norcat also. So Dimitri Johnson. I think I have biggest challenge in in one FC. This is this is what I think, and uh, I think many many people who understand combat game uh, like I said when I was in Singapore and when I saw the, the the fighters it's other level from from uh, from every organization wow. so now I want I want to try to take these belts what about this is this is only a reason you know I'm really the best in the world what about KSW because you were a champion in two weight classes there did they make you an offer yeah, they may make some, of, but I clean division. Mm. I clean welterweight division. I clean middleweight division. I'm also grateful. I was very happy when I signed with KSW. Great time. Thanks for the Marty Lewandowski was was great boss. Like I said before, what, what we say, he give me. You know, I bring the noise. I bring the noise in uh, in uh, how to say in the cage. So. Finally, uh, it's over. I took the two belts, you know. I, I beat Mamed. I beat uh, so many good guys like Boris Mankowski, my Michael Materla. And uh, now I want to do something different. And uh, this make me good motivation, you know. I, I, had, I had a lot of fun there. Really, Polish fighters are amazing and very strong. And I have a lot of experience from the from the combat sport and uh, i can say the the poland is also one of the great great people like uh in uh, true true fighters you know true warriors like also jan blachowi champion and uh, we have uh, all, in croatia i want to do 
something different, you know, like Mirko Krokop in that time, he was kickbox champion, also world kickbox champion. He go to Asia now, now I go his way. Mm. So he's for us legend. And uh, this is, this is different offer from one FC. This is different. I, I believe, I believe I can took the, all the belts from different combat sports. This no 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 nobody do this before. I, I'm sure. I know you have a relationship with Mirko, legend. I love Mirko, one of the greatest ever. Did you ask him for any advice? You were making a big decision here, right? This was a huge moment in your life and career. Did you talk to him at all as you were trying to decide what to do? Uh, yeah, we talk a little bit. Not 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 so deep. Okay. Like he say, where where is better you go? You know, don't. UFC is big name for sure. I, I know UFC champions and you know and what you know. So the for me it was the biggest biggest uh, challenge is one FC. Mm. After when I saw the the events and how they treat the fighters and uh, with Mr. Chatri, it's everything possible. He gave me this opportunity to fight in a different combat sport also something new you know so i took the one fc finally and uh, we will see we will see in the future maybe not in one year two year but i have long long contract now so i gonna try to be a world how to say in world champion mm. world champion not only only europe champion like in case that i wanna be world champion and do you know when your debut for one championship will be Mm, for me, I don't know. I don't know. We need we need send the, the emails w w w uh, when they when they give some fights. But I think the first fight will be MMA for sure. Okay. I wanna check how how is weight cut. I wanna see the fighters in my my uh, my division and uh, yeah, let's go, baby. When, when would you like your debut to be? Like, do you want to fight this year? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, maybe October. So. Okay. But th this is thing also maybe again December. He give me he give me this opportunity that I don't w wait for a one year fight for MMA fight. You know? mm -hmm. I wanna I wanna stay stay fresh, stay uh, stay active, stay positive. Uh, I I need, you know, I train like one year and no fight. This is also bad. Right. So, Chatri give give me opportunity i say to him bring everybody bring jake paul also <laughs> he he smiled you know yeah i have four boxing fights i know I, well, people, yeah people understand when they go sparring with me uh when i land left hand <laughs> I, I give big problems yes know? So Vicious. i'm not afraid i know people talk too much also in in america and they don't show up good like 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 uh, Sean Strickland, he told, I killed Pereira in two minutes. He, you know, you can do this in this sport. You can do this. So, so I want to make something different. I hope, I hope, I, 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 I try, I give my best to take all, all belts from combat sport. And this, this opportunity, I, how I say no, this is, this is impossible. And, and Maybe if I go to, to other organization, I, I wait one year for the fight. This right. is a problem for me. I want to stay active. And uh, which weight do you think will be your first fight um, in, in one championship? Will you be at 170, 185, something? Else? What are you thinking right now? 170, 185. This, this which one first? I, I will which one do you prefer? How, uh, 170, 170. Okay. 170. 170. Because I feel... Very good, strong, fast, you know. So with these fighters, I, I need really good training. And uh, my coach is also from uh, from striking game, Ivan Hippel, like legend in in Muay Thai. And uh, and uh, this make me like dreams come true. And also speak to you, dreams, dreams, dream. Well, huh. was the one dream, you know. So finally, I see you, and uh, now. I live my my how to say I, I live my life. So 
everything is possible. So I, I want to create my own legacy. I appreciate that. Um, and just to be clear, when you say that you're going to fight in these other disciplines, right? Like uh, Muay Thai, boxing, Jiu Jitsu, is that all for one or is one allowing you to go fight for other people as well while you're also doing MMA for them? We we need to talk. Okay. He said, "What you want, we give you opportunity." Wow. I wanna I, w I wanna give you something new, and uh, you can be world champion kickbox, world champion Muay Thai, world champion MMA. So wow. We we will talk. You know this this is something different and makes me makes me fire. You know, so after after we talk. I will I will announce on the my Instagram and uh, I, I I cannot how, how I say uh, no no this offer yeah so that was it's the big just, thing for you mm -hmm. the 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 ability to yeah. go out and do other stuff was big you didn't want to be tied down and be exclusive to one discipline yeah 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 I I choose because it's the biggest how to say the the biggest martial arts in the world want to mm. see. We 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 see what happens when UFC starts go there. Something different. I think totally different. I think you should get a title <laughs> shot in your first fight for for one championship. You're a double champion KSW. You should fight for the belt. Your first fight in in uh, in one. Do you agree with me? Is that going to happen? Uh, I want I want to stay humble. I don't <laughs> want it. you know. I want to I want to feel the cage. I want to. I don't want pressure because this is no joke with these fighters. And when I see how they how, how they throw the elbows and everything, uh, low kicks, you know, this is really different. So I go for challenge and challenge is 1FC. I say to, to Chatri, don't pressure, give something. I, I want to fight Eddie Alvarez for sure if he if he give me Eddie, Eddie Alvarez. So, and... Uh, first fight? You know... Roberto versus Eddie, first yeah, fight? fight? Yeah. Let's go. If he, yeah, I say, I say, Chad, let's go. We will see, we will see. And uh, then after, I want to feel the cage. I want to feel the Singapore air, how to say, mm, the yeah. food, everything. Right. I don't want to rush like, straight uh, straight for the belt, you know. I want to feel it. I, I know the champions are not joking. They, they can hurt. So I will be... I will be like, how to say, I will be really focused on it and uh, no mistake with this fight. When I, when I saw the Rotang and uh, everyone, it's something, something, something special. Really. Which, which event were you at that you uh, went to visit? I, I saw that on your Instagram, you were in Singapore. Did you go to multiple events or were you at one in particular for one championship? One normal, normal, uh, normal was event. Even even with the uh, COVID COVID situation was very good noise, very yeah. amazing with the, with the atmosphere. No, like like before when, when I saw uh, when Mirko Krokop there uh, is you know mm -hmm. when the the twenty years ago yeah. before some they give a lot of respect, a lot of respect, and uh, Chatri with the, those fighters is uh, something different relationship. Mm. They are they are happy. They they don't say, "Hey, this guy." Uh, they every everyone happy. And then I say to my manager, "I wanna go there. I wanna try this." He say, "Yeah, you 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 choose what you want. You know. So mm -hmm. I wanna be true martial arts world champion in everything." <laughs> did you did different. you meet Dana White? No, didn't meet him. No. Who'd you meet? Hunter no. Hunter Campbell. Yeah, Hunter Campbell. Yeah. Okay. I go. I went to. I went to backstage in London. Yeah. Also, very good offer. But compared to to one FC, I wanna be the best best guy in the world. Mm. And, I wanna. I wanna be different. Something different. And outside of MMA, like, what would be the next thing that you want to do? Like, what's the next discipline that really excites you? Is it boxing? You mentioned four and boxing. Is it Muay Thai? Is it something? yeah, yeah. Boxing. Boxing. Like, boxing for sure. Boxing for sure. I, I, yeah, because I have four, four fights. Yeah. I remember Martin around a year or so ago 
Lewandowski uh, sent me a message saying that uh, he was going to try to put together you versus Jake Paul in a in a boxing match. That he wanted to make this happen. This is something that interests you. Yeah, why not? But Jake Paul don't, don't take this risk. It's too much risk for him. I don't have risk. I don't have anything. I know. I, I respect him. Also good, good, good fighters. But uh, good, good fighter. But no, uh, you know, nothing specialist. I think he's too slow. Mm-hmm. When I when I throw the le- my 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 hands is I I bring the noise in in uh, in uh, in arena. You know, I I'm not point fight. I go I go for it. You know. So this is my my this is my life MMA kickbox box I do everything I wanna be I wanna be in everything champion mm. this this is and this do you, is do you good think this is the future for me. Jake, Jake. sorry go ahead for, uh, yeah yeah say say what no what I was just mean? curious for you like for a fighter to be able to have the ability to try other things. Is this, uh, is this the future? Do you think like this is something, you know, a boxer is able to do this, that, but in, in MMA, the contracts, as you know, can be very restrictive, very exclusive. Is this the future like, yeah. to be able to go and do something for here and something there, something here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I want to, in one FC is the, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest stage, you know, for this. If I if I go to 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 kickbox, I know one one championship have the best strikers in the game, the, in the in the world, you know. So, man, just, I, I know I know how how tough is the one FC with the, right. those strikers and the grapplers, and it's something different. When I, when I saw this and. Uh, this is big challenge for me. Nobody do this. Send send the MMA fighters to to boxing or something like this. Everybody lose. I understand you're and, doing uh, a, a big press conference tomorrow in Croatia with Chatri. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is going to be a big deal. And, big news there. You're a big yeah, star yeah, there. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia. People respect me in Poland also. Right. Poland, Austria, everyone, everyone in Europe, my 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 people, like how to say, old Yugoslavia. Yeah, you know, to, we together. I have a lot of support, and uh, they say they say you do where you like. We we gonna support you, and for this, I wanna do. I wanna create my own legacy mm. for my people. Was it hard to leave Something KSW? Special, was it hard to say goodbye to them? Uh, or cuz you fit you well, said you cleaned out the divisions enough. and uh, you 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 felt yeah, you yeah, could move it's on. Enough. Enough. I, it's enough. Yeah, it's enough. I took the belts. Yeah, yeah, I took the belts. And uh this is it. This is it. They they say they say before we bring you some Polish boxer but nothing happened. I just wait for the fight. Right. We cannot give you only like you know, no, 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 nobody sent me offer for the fight. I say always to my manager, Ivan, hey, let's go, let's go. What happened now? What happened now? And uh, I choose one. He give me the best opportunity. Why not? Yeah. And I know they are the biggest, the biggest in the world. Yeah, because I think your contract only expired in July, right? Didn't it only expire in July? So why didn't you fight it all this year? Because your last fight was in December. What happened? Yeah, July or one one more fight. Yeah, or one more fight. Yeah, so why didn't you get the fight? No, but no, no offer. Wow. They they yeah, no offer. I Frustrating. Say, send me anyone. Yeah. Send me anyone. Maybe they will wait for the moment. They maybe I say that I give a second fight for the moment, but you know what happened. He go to hospital and uh, was big problems. He want also rematch. He go to me, hey brother, let's go, let's do rematch again. And I cannot wait for the December. I have my my. I am twenty seven. I'm not forever twenty seven. Right. I need forward. I need go go. How to say? I need work. I 
I give me some different guy, and they give me some some new no name, you know? but they they don't offer. They they give one offer, but for uh, September or October, and then I say Ivan, my manager. I say brother, it's date is finished, expired after four years and uh, six months, and uh, I don't have motivation. And then he say, I will talk. We will see. You know, maybe one more fight. Why one more fight? It's experience. Experience. Uh. It's finished. And that's it. And okay. uh, finally, I can. I sent to my loyals. And they say, you, your contract is over and you can do this on, wow. the, on the paper with 1FC. And I called Chatri and uh, my manager, brother, sent the contract. We want to see on the on the paper and everything what we said that, that there was on the paper. and. I go for the best offer and the, for the for the true martial arts and I want to do something special something different from from the guys. I love it. Final thing for you Roberto, if someone hasn't seen you yet, let's say there's an American fan they don't know, could you tell them why should they be excited about watching you in one championship? What kind of a fighter are you? Are, are you ferocious? If for someone that may not be familiar with your style, your history, if they haven't seen KSW uh over here in the states, Tell them who not, you are. Not only KSW, not only. Yeah, but not as of late. KSW, they, they, yeah, they can see also in fights in cage wars. Mm -hmm. They can see fight also in in Germany, in Croatia, like final fight championship in 2015, 16, where it was really popular there and where, where it was really hard to took the belts. I have five belts, five different organization belts in MMA. And uh, also, I say seven belts, but my team say no, no, sir, because I beat Dricus Duplessis. He was also, uh, he's also in UFC. He was double champion, middleweight and welterweight in EFC. So when I beat him, I have also his belts. <laughs> because he took first fight, he beat me with the horrible, my, my weight cut, you know, and this kind of, uh, you know, not, 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 not experienced like, I was very young for this fight. Now, for me, it's different. When I when I won him, so I, I have uh, seven belts, and uh, I bring the noise. I go forward, smart forward. I, I give pressure, and my my pressure nobody can handle it. If they go for takedown, they they can see something different. And uh, yeah, people in America they they will me no they will me know soon. Oh yeah. It's, Easy, yeah. You're ferocious. I, That's the thing that I yeah. love about you. I mean, just looking at your last um, results, KO, TKO, TKO, decision, KO, KO, TKO, KO, TKO, KO, TKO, KO, like it's all, I mean, it's it's crazy. You don't, uh, I mean, you, you, you very rarely ever go the distance, 20 and three, like you said, KSW champion, two divisions, you fought for Cage Warriors, Superior FC champion, final fight champion. You've been all over the place. Three. And a lot of people were very excited to hear about where you would go, who you would sign. Would you go to KSW? Would you go back there? Would you go to UFC? Would you go to Bellator? You end up going to one championship, a huge, huge piece of news, a curveball, as they say here in America. I don't think a lot of people were expecting this. And I appreciate you coming on uh, our show to break this news. And they just signed a big deal here in North America with Amazon. I don't know if you heard this. So I hope that your debut will be on yeah. Amazon because then uh, all of us yeah. could watch you in prime time. That would be huge as well. And I wish you nothing but the best in this new chapter. Thank you so much for coming on the show to announce this news, Roberto. And good luck tomorrow in your press conference back home in Croatia. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. And see you soon. Yes. Live, I hope. Live. Absolutely. Anytime, my friend. Thank you. Thank All the best to you. There he is, Roberto Soldic. Breaking news, Frank. Massive news. One of the biggest free agents in MMA is no longer on the table. Thank you. Appreciate that. 20-3 and three coming off that huge win over Mamed Khalidov back in uh, December. It was one of the last events of 2021. I remember posting it on my Instagram, and it got something like 800,000 views. He is a very impressive-looking young man. And as he said, just 27 years old. Uh, incredible physique, incredible power, incredible striking style. Like he said, also uh, four fights in uh, pro boxing as well. His last came in 2017. He fought 2016. 
to 2017, but the guy just knows how to fight. His last loss was against Dricus Duplessis uh, back in, or Duplessis, excuse me, back in April of 2018, but then avenged that loss and won via TKO in the third round some um, six months later. Uh, prior to that, his last loss was in June of 2016, has had a remarkable run, just one loss in his last 14 or so fights, and uh, had won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fights in a row leading up to this big decision, uh, was a free agent as of July, it's August 1st, he is signing with one championship, not a lot of people saw this coming, um, and I certainly didn't as well, one championship is on quite a run as of late with their Amazon news. Uh, they will make their Amazon debut uh, on uh, Friday, August 26th. And those events, by the way, here in North America are going to air in prime time. So they'll air in the evening here in the morning over there in Singapore. And who knows, come next year, maybe they make their transition over to uh, North America as well. There was some talk pre-pandemic of them coming to the United States. Um, obviously, those plans changed as of late, but they are back at it. It's been a while, by the way, since we had a big free agent signing. And so I like this sort of thing. It's always very exciting. I thought he was headed to the UFC, if I'm being honest. I really thought he was headed to the UFC. Saw him at the events. Seemed like there was big interest there. Um, and in the end... No UFC. How about that? One championship. Curveball. Eddie Alvarez versus Roberto Soldich would be a, I mean, crazy fight. I don't know if, you know, Eddie hasn't fought in quite some time. I don't know if that's the one to come back to, uh, but that would be a, I mean, that would be a main event fight if you ask me. That would be a big time fight. Uh, so congratulations to him and appreciate him coming on and appreciate one championship for making this happen. The PR team, uh, Matt and Josh, appreciate them. Very, very much. In a matter of seconds, we're going to be joined by Davis and Figueredo, the reigning defending UFC flyweight champion. Of course, he was in attendance on Saturday in Dallas. He was sitting in the front cage side and got into the cage after uh, Brandon Moreno's big win over Kai Car France. Following that discussion, we'll talk to James Krause. And following that discussion, we'll check back in with GC and get a recap of his picks from uh, this past weekend. A lot of MMA to come this coming weekend, of course. UFC back. They're back at the Apex. Womp, womp. Uh, nice little main event. Uh, Jamal Hill, obviously, is someone that people are very excited about. Tough finale, as uh, GC mentioned as well. PFL also this Friday. So we're also going to get the uh, Jake Paul fight on Saturday. Womp, womp. But uh, still a lot to like. Still a lot going on. Without further ado, though, let us say hello to Deutsch Degeta himself, Davison Figueredo, kind enough to join us via the Magic of Zoom. There he is. Oh, and Captain Eric in the house as well. I wasn't expecting Captain Eric here. Hello, Captain. Hello, Davison. How are you guys? Hello, brother. I, uh, I'm so good. Thank you. Thank you for the time, my friend. Captain Eric, good to see you as well, my friend. Uh, thank you for coming. You look fantastic, Davison, by the way. That chain is great. You got the jewelry. You got Everything looks great about you. Uh, we have a lot to discuss. So let's get into it. I saw your message on Instagram. I was worried that you were not going to come on, but you were telling the people that you are fired up. You have a lot that you want to say. First, can I ask you, what did you think of Brandon's performance on Saturday, his win over Kai Kai France? Kai Kai France tinha tudo para ganhar a luta, né? Eu acho que, eu penso, não, eu vi o Caicara França com um pouquinho de medo ali. Se ele luta um pouco mais sério, um pouco com, com mais vontade, entendeu? Com mais, com, com mais sabe, a, a, aquele ódio de, de nocautear, eu acho que ele ganharia a luta ali. I did, I think he was doing everything he could to win, but I would like to have seen him a little bit with more, with more blood in his eyes, impose his will a bit more, and I thought he could have, he got a I thought he could have pulled off the win had he done that. But what did you think of Brandon's performance? O que você achava de o performance de Brandon? Performance do Brandon Moreno é a mesma como sempre, é um cara que não muda o jogo dele, é sempre lutando do mesmo jeito e eu tenho o antídoto para esse jogo dele. Você tem quem? O antídoto. Antídoto. Ah, antídoto. Uh, so uh, Brandon 
Brandon looked the same as he always has. He's never changed his game. It's always the same. And I have the antidote for him. Okay. Um, when you walked into the cage, what did you think was going to happen there between you two? Bom, aí eu entrei e, como sempre, entro para minha luta, tipo, vontade de nocautear alguém, né? Mas uh, ele foi um cara que me tratou doce, né? Ele é doce, ele é docinho. E isso acalmou a fera que, que existe dentro de mim. Então, eu fiquei ali observando o, o, o jeito docinho dele, né? Isso até me contagiou um pouquinho ali, mas agora já voltei ao mesmo eu. E ele tem certeza, eu sou um cara salgado. Eu sou um cara que quero nocautear, quero nocautear, principalmente ele que está querendo o que é meu, que é o meu cinturão. So, uh, when I enter the cage, I enter the cage with rage. I'm always looking for a knockout, but, you know, Brandon was, was so sweet <laughs> during the interview that uh, it, got, it, it got me, it was contagious and it kind of rubbed off on me. So, uh, I kinda, it kind of calmed the beast in me, but now I'm back. The rage is back, and I'm gonna. I'm coming for the knockout in the in the fourth fight. Were, were you disappointed that Brandon won? Because it seemed like you were looking for a fresh matchup. Kai Car France was a fresh opponent. Were you disappointed that Brandon ended up winning the fight? Bom, a luta para acontecer não era essa, realmente. A luta era para acontecer era com o Caicara França, é um cara que eu ainda não lutei na categoria. É, eu, já, eu já vim batendo todos, né? Já vim batendo todos, com exceções é, de alguns que eu achei que chegariam no último do cinturão, mas foram parados no meio do caminho. E Caicara França era um cara que merecia lutar pelo cinturão, infelizmente perdeu. E agora só, é, só resta a, o Pantoja e Breno Moreno. É. Então vamos fazer a quarta luta. É o que é, o que é para acontecer? É o que o público quer ver? Quer ver porrada? Quer ver show? Então vamos fazer acontecer essa luta. So Kai Car France, I was already supposed to, supposed to fight him on the way up up to getting getting my belt the first time. Uh, unfortunately, he got beat on the way up. Um, he deserved to fight for the for the belt. He didn't make it, and now we have the fourth fight. It's the, the only people left is Pantoja. And Moreno, the public wants Moreno, and that's what's going to happen. I'm going to put on a war. We're going to put on a show. Um, when they first announced the interim flyweight title fight, you seemed very upset, almost offended by this. Sitting there, watching it go down, seeing someone else with the belt, how did that make you feel? <laughs> Eu me senti um pouco desvalorizado, um pouquinho, né? Pelo simples fato de eu estar lesionado. Eu sou um cara que eu, que eu não, 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 eu não deixo passar a luta, eu sempre aceito as lutas, né? Mas realmente eu tô vindo de lesão e agora meu pensamento mudou. Né? Isso vai ser bom, isso vai ser o um marketing a mais. Essa luta vai vender porque vai ser uma unificação de cinturão. Eu, pensando como UFC, eles causaram um impacto grande, colocando o cinturão interino para que venda mais. E, certamente, uma luta contra o Breno Moreno vai vender muito mais. É um cara que a gente não é amigo, eu não sou amigo dele. E pode ter certeza, a hora que a gente se encontra dentro do octagon, eu não vou dar um passo atrás. É, a gente vai degradear em pé ali dentro do octagon do primeiro round ao segundo. É o que o povo quer ver, é o que o público quer ver. Eles vão ter porrada e é isso que vai que eu vou fazer dentro daquele octagon acontecer. Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I was a little, I felt a little bit devalued, uh, just a little bit when I saw uh, they announced that first made that announcement. Um, but now I see, I think about it with a different mindset. I see it as uh, the UFC is, is making the great choice because now we're going to unify the, the belts. This is going to be the first quadrilogy in history. This is going to be the greatest flyweight fight 
in history. And I promise you, I will not take a step backwards. I will walk forward and I will impose my will from the first round to the last round. This is going to be the greatest flyweight fight in history. The UFC has made it this way. This is what the public wants. And it's going to be on fire. How is your finger feeling? And when do you think you could return to action given the state of the injury? Eu tô uma vez 5% já, já posso treinar. Inclusive, tô treinando muito boxe, muito Muay Thai, né? E já percebi que isso não me impede de socar uma manopla. Eu sou um cara que treino 100% forte e isso não tava me deixando treinar forte. E agora, 95% já consigo treinar, treinando mais técnicas agora. E pode ter certeza, é, o meu jogo, ele é incrível e ele sempre vai se tornar mais incrível. Breno Moreno é um cara que não me conhece. Ele sabe que eu sou selvagem. Ele sabe que eu me adapto é, na selva. Eu sou um cara, eu sou o único da selva, dono do cinturão. E ele pode ter certeza. Eu venho com um jogo totalmente diferente, novamente para matar ele. O início foi o início. Primeiro para desse Breno Moreno sabe que eu sou um cara incrível. Sabe que eu tenho um jogo uh, diferente. Brent... Brandon Moreno knows I'm an incredible fighter and I'm going to get to this fight even more incredible. I am 95%. I'm already training all aspects of MMA. I'm, I'm a person that loves to go 110% for every training. My game is evolving every single day and, and he knows nothing about my game. I'm going to bring a new game to him once again. He, he knows nothing about the, the God of War, the quadrilogy. You will see a a new God of War in this fight. Uh, David said, this is the first time I speak to you and uh, Valid Ishmael isn't there. You are no longer represented by him. You're now with Vayner, Uriah Faber, uh, Lloyd Pearson, Mike, all that whole crew over there. And congratulations to you on this. But could you tell us why you parted ways with Valid? Because for a long time, it seemed like you guys were inseparable. Bom, é, tudo que eu tenho a dizer ao Valid é um cara que eu desejo muita sorte para ele, muita felicidade na longa carreira dele. né? Agora eu estou com uma nova equipe e trabalhando muito bem, graças a Deus. Pode ter certeza, eu estou com os melhores ao meu lado. Hey, I want to wish Valid luck. We had a great, great time together. We won a world title together and now I'm with a new team and better than ever and I can't wait to for this new uh, partnership. To continue. Uh, any hard feelings on your end? I, I saw him say some pretty, uh, you know, he seems like he's upset, let's put it that way, about the, the separation. Any hard feelings towards him on your end? Não, muito pelo contrário, não tem briga, não. O Valide é um cara que a gente sorriu muito juntos, né? Brincávamos sempre quando estávamos juntos. Tivemos é, brigas pequenas agora no final da carreira. Mas, enfim, é o que eu desejo para ele são felicidades. É um cara que eu sempre vou respeitar e é um cara que eu quero que tenha uma longa carreira, um longo sucesso. Man, you know what? Uh, Valid and I had great times together. A lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And I'm always going to wish him happiness and success and wish him a long career in the future. Okay. Um, no hard. Fair enough. We had, small, we had small fights towards the end, but I wish him success and happiness for sure. Fair enough. Uh, in order to return, Davison, do you want a new contract from the UFC? You have been vocal about your pay. And uh, is there any talks of getting a new deal for you to return at 125 to fight Brandon Moreno now? Bom, eu vou deixar isso com o Ryan Fabe, né? Eu contratei o cara para trabalhar para mim, é um cara incrível. Eu confio nele, confio nas pessoas que trabalham com ele. E agora eu tô focado no Brandon Moreno, né? Novamente tenho uh, coisas a fazer quando encontrar ele dentro do octagon. I'm gonna leave that up to Uriah Faber, the new manager. I, I, that's the reason why I hired him. He's great, and I got to keep my focus on Brandon Moreno and, and what I'm gonna do to him inside that cage. A lot of people don't seem to believe that you are going to go back to 125. Even Joe Rogan on Saturday said. You're not going back. This is the real title fight. Will your next fight 100% be at 125 pounds? 
Você jogou e falou que você não vai voltar para a mesa. Bom, eu sou... Eu sou um cara que já bati, já bati 56 e 700, né? É, muitas vezes na minha vida, estando nesse peso que hoje estou. E pode ter certeza, é só um trabalho incrível que eu vou fazer para chegar a esse peso, né? Logo mais vocês me vocês vão me ver no shape. Podem esperar, eu estou com os melhores ao meu lado. Listen, I made my whole career making 125 uh, pounds. Uh, it, it's definitely hard work to get there even from the weight you, you've seen me at uh now i i will be able to get it it's going to be uh an incredible job and i'm when i get down there believe me i've done it before i'll do it again i'll be ready so your next fight will be at 125 you still want to defend that title eu vou defender esse título sim por muito tempo e o que eu quero é experimentar uma luta na categoria de cima. E, com certeza, se me derem aí uma disputa pelo cinturão, é o que eu quero. I am definitely going back and defending my title. I would love to experiment at 135 pounds and even a shot at the title. Ok. Uh, in the future, you mean, right? Yeah. Ok. And, and by the way, uh, would it be rude, like, could I ask you, how much do you weigh now? Agora eu tô com 135 libras. Tô bem, bem, bem no shape já. 135, baby. Really? 135? Come on, I don't believe this for a second. 135? Kilos or pounds? Pounds. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and uh, so so do you feel, I just, just wondering from Davidson, like, do you feel a little bit disrespected? I heard, you know, when, when you were saying, oh, I'm going to drop the title, Dana White dismissed it, the other fighters at 125 are saying, oh, he doesn't want to come back, he's ungrateful. Like, do you feel like you have been disrespected in the last few months? Não, oh, isso é, é, agora eu já tenho como ótimo arte, né? É, eu tava esperando que a cara França vencer, como falei, né? E ele foi nocauteado. Agora, é, a luta tem que acontecer. O cara tá com o cinturão interino, eu sou o dono do cinturão, né? Só existe um dono do cinturão, que sou eu, Davidson Figueiredo. E eu tô pronto, né? Eu sou selvagem dentro do octagon. E principalmente com quem quer tomar o meu cinturão. Eu vou ser selvagem com esse cara novamente. For sure. They have the interim belt, but the real king, the real owner of that uh, 125 world title is me. I'm the king of the jungle. When I get in there, I'm going to show everybody who's the real king. I'm, I'm I, uh, the king of the jungle, selvagem. Wild. Okay. And and where are you going to train for this fight? Because obviously Captain Eric is here, a great coach out of Arizona, but I know you're with Shootabox as well in Brazil now. So where are you actually going to train for this fight and who will be in your corner? Bom, atualmente eu estou na Shootbox, né? E eu, quando estou com grande luta marcada, eu sempre tenho novidade. Mas eu estou na Shootbox. A família me abraçou lá, são os caras do bem demais. E da minha cabeça tá treinar com eles, não sei no amanhã. I'm always improving, I'm always uh, looking to improve, and I'm at uh, Shootbox. They've they've embraced me. We have a, uh, they've embraced me like their own. I'm re I'm really vibing with them. They're great energy, and and that's where I'm at. So, are you going to train with Captain Eric and Henry Cejudo as well? É uma possibilidade, né? É, já, você já pensou se o mestre Diegão deixa eu levar o Captain e o Henry Serrudo para São Paulo? Né? Vai ser ótimo ter esses caras ao meu lado. Yeah, uh, great to have you back on my side, but imagine I spoke with Diego Lima, my uh, coach. Hey, what about bringing the captain and Triple C over here? Imagine that, those guys by my side as well. Do you want to do that, Captain? Are you down with that? Man, when it comes to Brandon Moreno, you know I'm down with this. I know, I know you are. I know you are. Um, can I ask you, earlier today, my friend Guilherme Cruz, 
great reporter, MMA Fighting, uh, translated this from your Instagram story. And you said something in your story earlier today. I can't be friends with him, meaning Brandon, because he's done something to me that's unforgettable. Maybe we could be friends after this fight, but before we have this fight, just watch it. The war is about to begin. What did he do to you that was unforgettable? Bom, primeiro é Breno Moreno traiu o Henrique Serrudo, né? Eu vou sempre bater nessa tecla que ele foi um traidor com um cara que ajudou ele a, a, a vir do México a trazer a família do México para os Estados Unidos. Serrudo deu a casa dele, né? Colocou o cara dentro da casa dele para morar. E o cara traiu ele, foi servir de sparring para o Benavides é, contra Serrudo na primeira luta. Né? E a outra agora é que ele abandonou o post dele de longas datas, um cara que amou ele, um cara que ajudou ele a chegar no cinturão, e quando perdeu para mim, ele abandonou esse cara. Então não dá para ser amigo de um cara que é traidor. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm not friends with any kind of traitor. First thing he did was. He betrayed Henry Cejudo. Henry opened his house to him and his family. They lived with Henry Cejudo. And then he went on to become Benavidez's sparring partner. Uh, second is after he lost to me, he abandoned his longtime coach for years, the person that helped uh, create him, and, and he left him. So I'm never going to be friends with a traitor. So, but what did he do to you that was unforgettable? What bothers you so much about him? Because I've heard you also call him a racist as well. Sim, é, é, o, o, o Brando Moreno é um cara que é, praticamente ele não me chamou de racista, né? Mas pessoas que andam com ele me chamaram. Um, um deles é o que luta no UFC também, que sempre estava de coach com ele, que estava lá no meu lado sentado. Rojos, Marcelo Rojos. Yeah. Yeah. Marcelo Rojos, né? Foi esse cara que fez a montagem, colocou o rosto de um macaco na minha foto, né? E eu fiquei satisfeito em Brando Moreno entrar para lutar sem ter esse cara ao lado. É um cara que eu não gosto. É, eu tava ali na plateia para ver as lutas e ele sentou do meu lado. Eu fui lá na, no, no, nos bastidores do UFC mandar trocar. Eu não, é um cara que eu não quero, não quero ficar do lado. E... É um cara que, que, que eu, eu sinto vontade de, de, de brigar com ele. Então eu prefiro sair para que não aconteça a, a algo de ruim. Yeah, so Moreno never uh, made any racist comments to me, but it was the persons by his side, the coach that's always in his corner, Marcelo Rojos, I believe is what he said. And uh, man, um, that really left, leaves me uh upset to see him uh uh with Moreno because of what he's because of the monkey face that he put on me um they even sat me by his side at the at the arena Saturday and I went back and requested to be moved because I don't want to be close to that guy I'm afraid I might have to fight him wow uh so I I, I was at, I asked to be moved from being close close to that coach he was by my side, uh, watching the fights. They sat us together. In your heart, though, do you, do you have hate for Brandon Moreno? Do you hate this man? Moreno, okay. Eu não odeio Moreno, né? Eu só não sou amigo dele. É um cara que tá querendo meu cinturão, é... e eu não vou ser amigo desse cara. A gente pode ser amigo após a quarta luta. Agora não tem como ser amigo. Né? Ele quer o que é meu e eu não vou deixar ele ter. I, uh, I don't hate him, but we're not friends. Um, he wants to be friends, but this is the fourth fight. This is to make history. First time in history. And we can be friends after, but not, not before or during. And what what is your prediction? When is this fight going to happen? If it's up to you, when does this fight happen and where? Bom, eu quero levar a luta para o Brasil, né? É, eu espero que o UFC, eu como dono do cinturão, o UFC me escute, leve essa luta para o Brasil. Eu já lutei com um cara várias vezes aqui nos Estados Unidos, onde cada cidade que eu lutei com ele, eu vi ali 
90% mexicanos. Né? E agora eu quero levar essa luta para o Brasil. Quero que o UFC atenda esse meu pedido. E eu quero fazer acontecer essa luta lá para a minha família, para os meus fãs. E vamos levar essa luta para o Brasil, por favor, UFC. Vamos embora, meu irmão. Let's go, UFC. I've, I've fought always in Moreno's home. 90% of the crowd is Mexican cheering for him. They've never been to Brazil for any of my fights. I want uh, to bring that to my fans, to my family. Bring it to Brazil. Let's go, UFC. Sao Paulo, I want my, my family and friends to be able to come and watch. And do you, do you, think, you'll, do you think you'll fight this year? By the end of the year, do you think you'll fight? Or do you want to fight? Uh, ah, esse ano, eu acho que não. Esse ano não. Vamos levar em janeiro para 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 São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, onde quer que seja. Eu quero essa luta no Brasil. Eu sei que vai ser bom para mim lá. Maybe that this year, but let's get this fight in Rio, São Paulo, January. Okay. So, uh, beginning of the year, I'll be ready. All right. Um, thank you very much for coming on, Davidson. And by the way, I thought you looked great on Saturday. I loved your sweater. Where did you get that sweater that you were wearing? Ele achou que você era muito bonita no sábado. Onde você pegou essa camiseta que você estava usando? Uh, Avenue George. Avenue George? Avenue George. Uh -huh. Avenue George. Uh, eu, tenho, eu, tenho, eu tenho um, um estilista que está me vestindo agora, né? E esse cara me indicou que eu usasse o vermelho que ficaria muito bom com minha sobrancelha e meu cabelo, né? O nome desse estilista é Eric Abarracinha. <laughs> I have a new stylist that said that shirt that's red goes well with my blonde hair and my blonde streak. His name is uh, Captain Eric. Oh my gosh, this guy. <laughs> It's a great look. The whole thing was great. You walked into the cage like that with fire in your eyes and then by the end you guys are hugging each other. I don't know what's going on over there. It was crazy. Yeah, man, he's sweet. You know, it was his moment. He's a sweet guy. And it, you know, it calmed me. It calmed my my will for war, uh, but it won't anymore. We're here to make history. And you know, as a coach, I'm always here. Not just Brandon Moreno. That's just a small part of it for me. It's, it, it's making history, the fourth fight in history. Wow, it's important. It's going to be the greatest flyweight uh, fight in history. Uh, do you want to say something? <laughs> What do you want to say? Ah, uh, não. Eu só perguntei se a tradução estava certa do Cap. <laughs> não, eu incluí que vai ser, vai ser história. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Obrigado. Thank you, Davison. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Great job, Captain Eric. Uh, I hope you're. Can I see your finger? How's it look? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. No. That's not bad. Ainda tá it's a little it's a little bit twisted still surgery or no uh, I'm, I'm from the jungle we don't need surgery oh this guy what a legend thank you davison all the best we'll see you soon Uh, when, when my grandchildren ask me what happened to your finger, then I'll be able to have, have a good story for them. Good man. Good man. Obrigado. See you soon. Obrigado, irmão. All right. Captain Eric, thank you as well. There they are. Captain Eric Davis. I wasn't expecting Captain Eric there. What a line, huh? I'm from the jungle. We don't need surgery. Golly. I'm from Montreal. We need surgery. That's what I would say. Um, well, there you have it. Some clarity on the whole situation. Uh, good to hear from him. We heard from Brandon Moreno. Now let's talk to the guy that we were talking to Brandon Moreno about. Longtime MMA veteran, longtime UFC veteran, and now has his first champion out of his gym 
in Kansas City, Glory MMA and Fitness. Had a great night on Saturday. It was a great moment, very emotional afterwards to finally get his first champion in the UFC. And he has developed into one of the best coaches in the game. Also, podcaster, gambling expert. I mean, the guy does it all. He's James Krause, and he's kind enough to join us right here now. There he is. Wow, look at this setup, James. You are uh, you are on top of your game in every facet. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me on. It's been a minute, man. I appreciate you having me back on. Yes, I saw you and uh, Jeff Molina. You guys were talking about me a couple of weeks ago, and you're like, "Oh, Ariel, he's a sneaky one." Don't think I didn't see that. I saw uh, that. Nah, you are. You're sneaky. You're good. That's why you're good at your job. Well, I take it as a compliment. Thank you. I appreciate I it. I, I think I tagged you. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to hide it. I think I tagged no, you. No, no, I know, I know. Much love. Uh, congratulations on the win. Could you describe what it's like? You know, now as you're transitioning from fighter to coach, to have a guy out of your gym that you've been working with the last few months now is, is a champion. I know it's not the official champion, but this is a big deal. What did it feel like for you on Saturday? Oh man, it's, it's obviously, it's just a, uh, I feel like it's an amazing, amazing thing for me, obviously, but I feel like a lot of coaches don't even ever have this shot. They don't ever even have the chance to fight for a title. I've been fortunate enough to fight for three, but I was over going in Saturday night and, uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was really important to me. And obviously, the, the two that I had before were Amanda Nunez and uh, Demetrius Johnson. So, <laughs> you know, they're not not easy goes. But but uh, man, Brandon is a special special guy, and I really I really enjoy coaching him. And I got to be honest, for somebody that is so you know high level, so high notoriety, he is one of the most humble, coachable uh, people that I've ever personally had the pleasure to train. And that's uh, just something. It's refreshing. You know, you don't you don't see that very often anymore. So how did this all come about? You linking up with him, him moving to Kansas City from your perspective, how did it all go down? Yeah, so uh you know, we uh we had the same manager, so it it was a little easy transition, I guess, but I went to, I, I'm I'm in Vegas like every weekend as you know, you know, and he he moved out to Vegas. So we just decided to start working together a little bit. You know, I go out there and I train him and, and Marcelo uh, Rojo and uh, Mosquito Fallen. They have a, an awesome little group they train uh together out there. I started training those guys and one thing led to another. It was like, we just kept going, kept going. And uh, they decided to come out for a week and then, you know, that they went back home and then the week came out for a month. And then, you know, Masio had a fight, stay with me for six weeks. And, and then Brandon came out for, you know, shoot, Brandon's been off and on in Kansas city right now for four or five months, probably. So uh, it's just been a, a smooth transition. And I think, I think we click, you know, I think we work well together. I understand what he's wanting. I think he, I think he likes, uh, the things that he likes about me would be uh, I'm kind of a dork with the fight game. I'm I'm talking about different concepts and stuff all the time, and I'm bringing new information to him. I think that's what he likes. Uh, you have to ask him about that. But uh, I'm constantly constantly trying to evolve, constantly trying to get better. And uh, I think I have a different style for his game that can that can help him out a lot. And yeah, I think that's that's kind of how it all came together. When you have a fighter like him who's already been champion, he's uh, you know already achieved a lot tasted success in the UFC, but now he's coming in, going into a title fight with you. Like how much are you trying to change? Cause it's different, right? When you have a prospect, when you have a fresh guy who's like one and oh, two and oh, and now you're just building, you're molding that piece yeah. of clay with him. You probably don't want to change too much, but you want to put yeah. your, you know, your, your fingerprints on what he's doing. So what's, what's the mindset in terms of like when you see him and how much you want to actually change what he's doing? Yeah, uh, listen. There was there was only a couple things that I that I wanted to change, and they were just they were just deficiencies in his game that have been attacked uh, multiple times. So uh, those are the things that we really worked on fixing. And I I think uh, I'm pretty sure I called the game plan for for Kai and those guys. I I, I felt very adamant. I knew what they were going to do, and that's just because it's it's what's worked in the past. So I you know we worked diligently, like ridiculously, a lot over fixing. Uh, fixing those things. And it's, I, listen, it's not just me either. Brandon's got an amazing team. Uh, Coach Capitillo there in Vegas has done an amazing job with his boxing uh, and, and, and the balance and, and uh, his stance. And, you know, we've worked kind of collectively on that. I know Hector Vasquez uh, does his jiu-jitsu and stuff like that. And, and Coach Hoya, uh, his coach back from TJ, is, is an amazing Muay Thai coach. So I don't want to act like it's just me because it's not. He has a very good team of guys behind him. And it's not just the, the guys in the corner. His, his whole team is it's just he, he really has a, a group of people around him that's special. But to answer your question, uh, there were really just a couple of things that I wanted to change. The rest was just evolving his game. And, 
I, I think he's he's so coachable that he just wants to win. You know, he just wants to win, and that's what I appreciate about him. And that was that was really just all that I wanted to attack is fixing those couple little things that I felt were deficiencies in his game, and then starting to build into this new fighter. And don't get me wrong, I know what I inherited. You know, I know this guy, he's got a world title without me. I know he's amazing, you know. Uh, but I do feel like last Saturday, I do feel like there was there was definitely differences shown in his game that will uh that I guess are validating some of the things that I'm saying. For for maybe the untrained eye, what were the differences? Uh for starters, his balance was a big one. Uh he he tends to when he has his hands up, he tends to bring his head over his lead leg a lot. And uh, when you when you bring your head over your lead leg a lot, it just doesn't allow for any, it's kind of just a, it's, it's, a, it's a pointless movement. Uh, the, the bad thing about it is the the low calf kick. When you, when you lean on your lead leg, you're not, you can't, when your weight is on your lead leg, you can't pick it up to check or you can't pick it up to, uh, we call it a hacky sack to bring your heel to your butt. You can't do any of those things. So that's why Figgy was beating his leg up a ton. And then also uh, he had a pretty, pretty bad telegraph when he threw a double jab, which is why Figgy would come over top of the jab almost every time he threw. So we fixed those two things and uh, his, you know, his balance, his ability to check the leg kick, that was all kind of, all kind of one thing, which led to him throwing more power and more lead hand action, which increased his volume. And then uh, working on his being disciplined with his, his lead hand jab coming back to his head uh, or checking off the hook rather than going back to his hip to where Figgy would come over top. Uh, that's, that, I mean, that's pretty much all Figgy did to beat him. And uh, I knew Kai and those those guys would key in on that. And I, I just trained, I just tried to fix the things that I would attack if I were fighting Brandon. Mm. Uh, there's that great clip that you posted as well, UFC posted it, where, where you are literally telling him uh, in between the second and third rounds, hook, then go to the body with the kick, and then we see it actually come to fruition, and that leads to the end of the fight. What is it like yeah. for you to know that, to say that, for him to process, and then to actually see it happen and then lead to the actual finish of the fight like we, and there's the great clip of you like you're explode you're looking the dude has his hand on you yeah, the, yeah you're like get the F on. What, what is that could you even describe what that is like to see that play out uh listen man i i can't say this enough i know what i got with brandon moreno like i know he's amazing but obviously it's got to make it's got to it makes me feel great to know that i was you know that my my decisions were a part of that you know it, it makes me feel really good but but furthermore it makes me feel even better to know that Brandon trusts what I'm saying already early in this stage, you know, with, with him and I just working together for, you know, six, seven, eight months. It hasn't been that long. So uh, it, it makes me feel really good, to be honest, that I made a difference in that fight. And, you know, the Brandon always wants to go high with that left kick. He always returns high. So we returned high for the first two rounds. And, you know, you get that, you kind of set the, set, set the stage and then, and the later rounds you start going lower and it's just, the, the the first time he threw it to the body, it got through, and I think it actually hurt Kai. It was, that was also in the third round, and I told him to go back to it, and it landed, and it was just, I mean, obviously, I, I look like a rock star now because of it, but uh, it was really cool, man. It's it's it's, but the Brandon's trust in me early on in this stage is is really remarkable, and I I really appreciate him for that. It means a lot to me. Just curious, because this is interim and not undisputed, do, do you think? In the undisputable, feel any different? Do you view this any different? Is this like the step to get to that one? How do you process it? Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm not going to delegitimize the, the 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 UFC title. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, of course, we're. I, I'm. I didn't hear the interview with with uh, Figueredo, but it seems like the stage is set for those two to fight a fourth time. You know, and I'm I'm excited for that. So I'm not going to get drug into the to the the BS between those two. I don't. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't care about that. My my goal is to make Brandon Moreno. You know the the he's the interim champion. That was my goal. Now, if the champion is next, that's 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 what it goes to next. You know, so uh, I'm not going to get into that mess between between those two. And to be honest with you, I thought Brandon uh, I thought Brandon handled it great. Uh, you know, with, with that comment about his daughter. You know, he said, "I thought of my daughter. She's she's understanding what things are are doing now." And I was kind of embarrassed as a father when he said that. I was like, "Shit, I didn't even think of that." You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I lost my mind on him in the cage. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, I feel like it kind of took away from the moment with Brandon. It's all good. You know, these guys are going to fight again. And uh, who wouldn't want to see that fight for a fourth time? So it is what it is, man. I'm not going to delegitimize that UFC title. Uh, I, I think Brandon, I think Brandon right now is the best flyweight on the planet. And we're hopefully we're going to have an opportunity to show that real soon. 
Even Dana himself afterwards said that in retrospect, he thought it was disrespectful. I don't know if you saw that comment, disrespectful to, to Brandon. So do you wish it didn't happen? Uh, I'm indifferent on if it happened or not. You know what I mean? What happened is done. I can't do anything about it. Uh, did it, I think it did take a little way, a uh, little bit away from the shine. Uh, but it's, you know, dude, it, it is what it is, man. What, you know, what are they going to do? Fight us over it? You know, like it's, right. it is what it is. It happened. It's all good. Like we're, we are set and prepped for that fourth fight. And we're already preparing for it. We're already film study. I'm, I'm all over it, man. Like that's my, you know, it's one goal to the next. I'm, I've already watched film on it. I broke it down before. I'm breaking it down again. That's the next goal. So that's where we go. So for you, uh, I know you've talked about this a little bit and you said that you're not going to close the door on fighting. Your last fight was around like a year and a half or so ago. Yeah. Are you officially done now? Like now that you got the champion done, is that it? What what are you thinking? Are you? Man, uh, I got to be honest with you. Like this, this last week for me, uh, I had a uh, herniated disc. I have a herniated disc in my neck and uh, it was giving me, it had a, it was giving me real problems going into that fight week. And uh, I was, I was, I was very close to, uh, to just, you know, just officially saying it. I, it's hard for me to. This is this is the problem with most fighters is it's it's hard to let that go. You know what I mean? It's really hard to let that go to to let go. But I could tell you with with almost a hundred percent confidence that you guys will probably never see me fight again. Wow! And uh, that and I'm good with that. I'm good with that. You're you know at what peace. I mean? Like I, I feel okay with that. Oh, a hundred percent, man. Like I, dude, this I've I've said this so many times. This is the number one problem with the sport and the fighters. Like this has to come to an end at some point. It has to, and professional athletics as a whole has to come come to an end. Like football players don't they don't play until they're fifty. You know what I mean? Like this has to come to an end. And unfortunately, we don't get to pick it. Most of the time, our body gets to pick it. I am fortunate enough to be able to to call my shot now, and I can say it now. I can you know I can uh fuck it, man. Like I'm just, I'll just, like I don't. You're never gonna see me fight again. I'm I'm done with the sport. I'm at peace with it. Uh, I don't, I have no desire to fight again. I, I really don't. My, my desires, my fulfillment, I've now shifted towards coaching moments like Brandon Moreno and the rest of my team. I, I get fulfillment out of those. So to, I, you know, I, you can call this my official retirement or whatever, but I, I, I do not plan on ever fighting in the UFC ever again. It's interesting because I'm sure you have come to this conclusion already. I'm sure you've talked to your family about this, but even saying it now, it's kind of hard for you to say it, right? To like verbalize it, to put it out there. It is. It is. Cause, and this is what I, this is, this is, and this is why I'm just like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to fight in the UFC again. I'm done as a fighter. That's, that's the, you're, you got the, there's your clip. But uh, the reason why it's so difficult is this, this game is a lot like a drug to most fighters. And, and most of the fighters, if, if they are fighting for a living, they probably come from like a low income family, broken homes, you know, not a good upbringing. And they've just had to fight for their whole, their whole life, you know, to, to, to have any type of success. And when you got, when you get that success, it's, it is like a drug. There's like a, there's like a drip that you get from it. Right. And uh, whenever you win, you get that, that dopamine drip, but whenever you lose, it's, it's the worst feeling in the world. And I think because of these fighters that come from, you know, broken families, low income homes, like they don't, they don't have the proper upbringing. So they self identify with the results of their last fight. So if they lost, they feel like a loser. If they win, they feel like a winner. When they win, you know, as well as I do, Ariel, you've heard this before. You've got to say it all the time. When it wins, the winning, it fades, you know, it may not, it, sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's months, but that, that dopamine drip that you get from winning fades. And you just want to feel like a winner again. And then when you go to fight again and you lose, you feel like a complete loser. And when you feel like a loser, all you want to do is feel like a winner again. So you get stuck in this vicious cycle and these guys don't know how to get out of it. And we see it every weekend with somebody that's still fighting that, you know, it's like, why is this person still doing this? And it's because of that. They're stuck in that vicious cycle of validation for themselves. And it's just, it's just such a nasty place to be. I wanted three things out of this. Uh, whenever I, whenever I call it quits, I said I wanted to be financially free. I've done that. I'm I am making I, to be honest with you, I would probably lose money if I if I fought. Wow. I wanted to I, I wanted to go out on my own terms. I didn't want somebody to be like, "Hey James, you lost three in a row." You know what I mean? And uh and and I wanted to retire in the UFC. That's that was those were my three three goals and I wanted to go out on a win. 
that, or a win in the UFC. Right wow. now, all three of those things are accomplished. If I had to fight again, it would put it at risk for no reason. I don't need the money. I don't need the validation. The only thing, the only thing that has kind of kept me dangling why I haven't just officially said, hey, I'm retired, is the idea of getting to set my gloves down in a UFC cage would give me closure but i just it does it, to me it's not worth the risk so i'm telling you right now you're never going to see me fight in the ufc cage again but i still get that drip i still get that dopamine drip i get to walk i make the walk with these guys every weekend i get those high highs i get those low lows i get to be a part of it and uh i don't take that lightly man it's really important and it's really special to me but to answer your initial question i will never fight again and just curious back in 2020 your last fight why didn't you put your gloves on the mat? At that point, did you think you would return? For, for probably three or four years now, it's been like a, ah, maybe, I'm not sure, I don't know. You know, dude, I'm 36 now, man. Like, I don't, I, I don't have a desire to fight one of these 24-year-old guys that are, you know, I just, I don't want to, I, I don't, I don't want to do it, man. I've been fighting for a long time. I've been fighting for going on 16 years now. I have probably like 75 or 80 fights pro and amateur, uh, I, I just, I'm, you know, I'm banged up. I'm beat up. I'm, I'm healthy for the miles that I have on me, but I just, I don't want to cut the weight anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. You know what I mean? Like I just, I just don't, you know? So I, I, I really have no desire to compete again, but you're a hundred percent correct. It's hard for me to yeah. say that. That's why I'm just, that's why I just kind of have to like, right. there's no time better than now, you know, it's done. So let's go. And, and uh, also when did you, come to the realization that coaching was something that you want to do? Because obviously this helps you. As you said, you get to make the walk and whatnot. When did that enter yeah. your mindset? Yeah, yeah, this is something that I like doing. This is something that I could build. This could be my, you know, my next chapter. When did that all start for you? I've been coaching for a long time. Man. I've been coaching way longer than what po most people know. Uh, I've been coaching for over 10 years. I'm just now starting to get some notoriety for it. So uh, I've always, it's, to be honest, it's kind of always been a part of my plan. I mean, I wanted to own a gym and I, and I guess when you own a gym and you're the one coaching, like you, that if you're good at it, that kind of, it goes hand in hand. Right. I guess I never really, uh, I always said I wanted to coach, but it never, I never really understood how far I could go with it. You know what I mean? It, I, up until a few years ago, I never wanted to, to coach a world champion and you, and you will never find a, uh, an interview of me saying, I want to be a world champion but you will find an interview with me saying, I want to coach a world champion. So just to clarify, you said uh, you never wanted to coach a world champion or you did? No, I never wanted to be a world champion oh. as a fighter. Why? Why not? I, never, I just never, I never cared, man. Really? It was never important. It was never important to me. It's unpopular opinion. Uh, I get it. Uh, it was just never something that was, I always wanted to use fighting as a different platform to, to, to make money to, cause dude, I like, I see these guys, man. It's like, you can't, you <laughs> it's just a hard living to make, man. It really is. It's a hard living to make. And like, I, I want a nice house. I want to drive a nice car. You know what I mean? I have a, a studio in my basement. I want to be able to do these things. And it's hard whenever you just dedicate your, your entire entirety of your day of your life to this game. And although I still do that, I get to, I guess I get to push it out in different, different ways now. So I've never wanted to be a world champion. I've never, I've never cared about it. Uh, but I, like I said, I do want to coach a world champion. Now I do. It's a pretty amazing feeling. Uh, you said something earlier that stuck with me. You said if you return to fighting, um, you would actually lose money potentially. H how is that yeah. possible? Dude, I, I mean, if I take time away to, if I take time away to train, like I, I have a thing, like I will not disrespect the game of MMA, and I see this every day to where these old guys, uh, old, older guys, the veterans, they disrespect the game because their bodies can't hang anymore. I will not train for a fight unless I'm training three, four times a day, like the necessary things to compete at the highest level of the world. I'm not going to disrespect the UFC. I'm not going to disrespect the people that have watched me. I'm not going to put out a saturated product of what I've shown. I'm just not going to do it. So if I'm not able to do that, then I'm not going to do it. So right now for me, if I take time and train three, four times a day, it's going to take away from other things that I have going on, businesses, you know, betting, handicapping fights whatever and it just it financially doesn't even, to be honest financially doesn't make any sense for me mm -hmm. but uh it, it just yeah I would, I would probably lose money if i had to dedicate my entirety of my day to you know to training again i see that you're very interested in the uh the betting side of things like how often do you partake yeah. in this oh i bet every single card just about every fight really yeah absolutely we have a i have a discord like two thousand members in it 
we crushed it last week. We destroyed it. Uh, like I'm, I take over people's accounts and play for them. Like I, I post the losses, you know, myself on some accounts. Like I don't, I, I do pretty well. I make more money gambling on MMA than I do anything else. Come on more than even coaching. Oh God, that don't make shit on coaching. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, absolutely not. Like, I mean, I mean, if you're talking about time, yeah. No, like if I go out, if I go out on a Wednesday, that's true. I go out on a Wednesday to Sunday, that's the most, you know what I mean? I make 10% of a guy that majority of, I mean, if we're not talking about Brandon Moreno, like right. most of my guys are entry level guys making 12, 12, 14, 14, you know, I have some guys making in the twenties, but even, even at that, like you get 10% of 20 grand is $2,000. I'm on the road every weekend, right. Wednesday to Sunday. You know what I mean? Like it, it just doesn't. No, to answer your question, no. <laughs> it's not even close. It's not even close. And just curious, like the Moreno fight, like fights that you're involved in, will you bet on those two? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's Sometimes. A... <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you bet on Brandon? Of course. He was a big favorite, though. Two to one. No, that's two not to... a big favorite. Oh, he was. Okay. It's... Well, what did he close two at? To one. It... Two to five. Oh, okay. Minus two to five. But it's not about, it's not about price. It's about value. I think Brandon wins that fight. And I, I'm... I'm, I may sound like a dick saying this, but I think Brandon wins that fight, you know, seven, eight times out of the 10. Mm. So that doesn't, that line is not just to, sure. that line is not just to the where, how many times I think he's going to win that fight. I just think he's a really difficult matchup for Kai. I really do. And I think the world of Kai, I think he's incredible. And I think what he's done in this division and his growth since the first time they fought is he, he I mean, he would get my, he would get my vote for uh, most improved flyweight mm. on the planet in mm-hmm. the last year or two. You know, I think he's incredible, but I just think Brandon is a really, really tough matchup for him. Overall, how'd you do Saturday? We crushed it, man. Crushed it. I think I went like 15 and two. And the two losses, one was a plus 900 underdog. And the other one was a hedge on a on another play we won. Damn, look at you. And when you say we, what do you mean by we? The Discord? The Discord, the group, the, yep, the group we're in. I just, I, I post the plays and, and people, you know. And do people pay you for this? For the picks? Yep. Wow. And that's yep. lucrative. Yep. Look that's at really you. Well. Um, that, but it does, but that, I mean, they make way more, you know what I mean? Make sure. Sure. Like we have a couple different, we have a couple different, uh, entry level positions. Like we have a $50 a month and I have a $2,000 a month, but they, I mean, they make way more than, you know, they make way more than they pay. That's for sure. And, uh, just if someone wanted to join this, how could they, like, how can they sign up for this? How does that work? The, li- the, the link is in my bio and all my stuff. Okay. I have a link tree on there. It's all in that. Yep. Look at you. Um, and, uh, just MMA or are you doing, I don't know, boxing, football, like I've, do you do a- yeah, I stay in my lane. So okay. uh, for for me, like MMA and and boxing are are most I do just about every promotion. You know, we do contender series, we do Bellator, we do UFC, we do uh, PFL, we do every, pretty much every any time anything you get a line for, we we play on it most of the time. Uh, boxing I'll do. I don't touch any ball sports or anything like that, but I have a couple guys in the group that are some of the biggest players that I have ever personally known doing very very large numbers per play, and. Uh, they are very good at ball sports. Wow. Uh, and how did you get into all of that? Like, how did you realize you had this, this gift, this, this, obviously, you know, MMA, you live and breathe it. You're yeah. a freaking pro fighter, uh, in the UFC, but like, you know, dabbling in this stuff and, and getting success is not always easy. I mean, it's a tough thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I break the fights down anyway, right? Like I, right. I, I break them all down anyway. So it just made sense. Uh, it just made sense. Like people were asking me to, Hey, will you come on, will you come on this week and talk about the breakdown of the fight for us? I'm like, yeah, we'll, if I'm going to break down the fight and I think this person uh, is going to win and the path to victory is clear, you know, it, it just, it just makes sense. Now the hard part is transitioning into the gambling portion of it where like the lines and stuff yeah. like that. And I've grown just by dealing with very high level gamblers. Like I have, we have a, a guy in the group that's mentored me and he's probably one of the largest, probably the largest MMA gambler on the planet. Whoa. Uh, and he's, he has uh, helped me a lot just learning like line value and such like that. And then, Guys like Yanni, you know Yanni the Greek. He's mm-hmm. I, him. Him and I talk regularly. He's uh, he's helped me quite a bit as well. Just just on the line value portion, like I'm good at picking the fights, but there is a gambling portion of does it make sense if the line is X? You know. You know my guy GC. You ever see his picks? Who is it? Connor Burks, GC, killing it. No. You don't know him? Kill it. Let's go. No, I don't. How'd you do on How'd you Let's do go. on Saturday, GC? I did fine. Not as good as James. Tell us. Don't be bashful. Yeah, they'll be modest. Let's go. I went like seven and four. Uh, finished up That's like it. what? You know, if you're going by units, finished up like six units. Nothing nothing too crazy. How are you doing 2022? 
We're up like 30 units. We're, we're, we're profitable. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's, no, that's 100%. That's good. See? That's good. Uh, that's really who, good. Who's, the good. Guy who, who's the guy who's mentoring you? Are you allowed to say the, the big name or is that? No. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> why is that no, off the record? Why? 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, would people know who he is? No. Oh, he's on the DL. Yeah, he's on, yeah, he's on the DL. Why is that? Uh, he can't play in a lot of the casinos. Uh, wow, because he's that good? Yeah. Holy smokes, he's been banned. They say, yes. keep your money at home. We don't want it. Yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. That's a different level. Um, wow, okay. that is. Are you still doing the real estate and all that? Yeah, I have like 30, I don't know, 31, 32 doors, something like that now. Sheesh. So you have you you have put out the not everyone could do it this way, but I feel like you have put out the blueprint. This people have to have these things going on when they're really wrong. Everyone everyone can do it that way, man. They can. If, dude, I I started out in the UFC making eight thousand to show, eight thousand to win. Mm. Like, dude, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I don't come from anything. I don't come from money. Uh, I live in a beautiful house. I drive a really nice car. Like, if I can do it, anybody can do it, man. It's just it takes discipline. It takes most of these guys don't. I mean, they haven't been taught. They haven't been taught uh, about banking and lending they haven't been taught about financial literacy they haven't taught any of this stuff you know and most of them don't want to know you know so uh they just like the big influxes of cash that come their way and then they when they get through it they fight again and then when they get through it they fight again and they get through it they fight again and then one day fighting's gone and they're like you know what do i do and then that's when you see the the vicious cycle take place what we talked about earlier where these guys are fighting for the wrong reason and it's just you know that's that's how we see it all the time so who taught you about all of this uh, I have a doctorate in the University of YouTube. <laughs> really? That was it? Yeah, I just, yeah, man, I taught myself. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, you do research, right? Like you read the right books, you'll kind of get an idea of where to go, right? Like, I mean, 90% of all millionaires are created through or own real estate. So I knew I needed to be in real estate. Right. You know, I knew I, I, knew I needed to be in real estate. And then you just, I, I try to like monetize things that I love doing, you know, like betting. I'm already betting on it i'm making money on the betting side of it so why not sell the picks to make money on that you know we run the group the group is great and you know now the group has turned into this this media team that we have like we have uh i don't know if you've been if you i know you follow me on instagram but like some of the edits that we're putting out are absolutely amazing where we have a you know i have four people on my media team that we are we're constantly growing and, and doing stuff like that and the editor that i have is a monster uh, he sets all that up, and dude, we just we're we're growing in that now. So now we're doing different stuff with that. We're, we're just growing different stuff, man. It's, it's it's different businesses, different things that I'm already doing. I might as well make money at. Do you tell your fighters about all this? You need to do this. You need to like. Of course. Yeah, and do they listen? Of course. Some do. Some don't. Yeah. Some <laughs> do. Uh. Some. Yeah, dude. It's, that's that's just the problem. You know what I mean? Like all the information is out there. I'm not doing anything crazy. Right. You know what I mean? Like the information is out there. It's whether you want it or not. You know. So. Uh. But yeah, like 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 Tim. Tim Elliott, he's got a couple rental properties. He's got a Airbnb in Vegas. Uh, he's got a house here in, in uh, Kansas City. They're looking at buying more. Molina, Jeff Molina just closed on his uh, first rental property a, a few months ago. Um, yeah, they, dude, they're doing it, man. Like some of my guys do it. And some of the guys aren't quite in the position to do it yet, but it's a process. You know, it takes time. Uh, I saw, I don't know if you saw uh, Conor McGregor giving you a shout out um, and mentioned James and whatnot. What's it been like? Uh, with James so far, I know it hasn't been a long uh, time together, but what's that been like? It's been good, man. He's a, he's a fun kid, and uh, he's one of those guys that I feel like uh, people look at his personality before because he's very brash on camera and stuff. But he's one of the most coachable, likable guys that I've ever I've ever met, man. He's he's a super cool dude, um, easy to hang out with, easy to be around. Uh, who you think he would be, he is the exact opposite of it in the mm -hmm. gym, man. He's an incredible dude, uh, very very talented too, very talented. And I feel like he he hasn't had that like that breakout performance yet, you know. Like his skill set, he's still so young, you know what I mean? He's still young, and he's I feel like he's been he's been fighting since he was a kid, and uh, he's been on that big level. He and he carries that pressure so well, man. I can't tell you how well he carries that, you know, in the in the O2 Arena and and Dublin with ten thousand people sounds like seventy thousand people. I mean, he carries it like a gangster, and uh, you know, I, th I think he's still looking. I, I think he still has more to give uh in terms of skill he hasn't shown what he's capable of yet i really believe that 
All right. So we've covered a lot here. This is a very exciting time in your life. Champion, uh, entrepreneur. By the way, because you've uh, you know been able to have this success outside of the cage, I'm just wondering, you know, it's something I've advocated for, like I would love to see UFC fighters have a pension. I would love some sort of security post-fighting. Like, hey, you get 10 fights, yeah. you get this amount. You get 20 fights, this amount. You're Donald Cerrone, you get this amount. How do you feel about that? Do you think that's something that would, uh, you know, be possible? And would you be in favor of that? Uh, in terms of possibility, I, I, I really don't know. You know, I mean, it seems it seems like it's possible. I don't I don't know the intricacies of what that takes to set up, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, of course, dude. I mean, all that stuff is a, is amazing. Any any life after fighting, especially for guys like Cerrone that have dedicated, you know, an entire life, blood, sweat, tears, brain cells. You know, anybody that's dedicated that to the sport, uh, they deserve something for that. You know, but I guess. My, my, my problem with that is, is right now we don't have that. You know what I mean? And, and there's, there's two arguments to make. The first argument is, is if we don't have that, you got to do it on your own. Then. You know what I mean? The second argument is, is like, okay, cool. Let's, let's try to get that. I don't know what that looks like. And, and honestly, that's not, it's not my concern. I, I don't need to change the rules. Tell me what they are and I'll play by them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, that would be absolutely amazing. And I think it would be great, but dude, there's, there's there's so many layers to this, right? I, I know where we're going with this, with like the, you know, with the, with the, can the UFC do more? There's so many layers to this because a lot of these guys, like if Cerrone, I, I don't know Cerrone's situation. I'm just going to use him as an example. If Cerrone isn't financially set for the rest of his life, it's not the UFC's fault. It's his fault. He's made millions and millions of dollars from fighting, right? So like that is on him to, to do that. Not everybody has that, but it is his responsibility to make sure he's taking care of himself. You know what I mean? Like, am I saying that we don't need a, a pension plan for these guys? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's mm. not what I'm saying. So, but, uh, but once again, if you're making millions, you, you got to take some responsibility. And most of the guys, most of the guys here in the UFC or any high level organization, they don't know finances. They don't know financial literacy because nobody's taught them and they don't even know what a pension is. Mm. So, I think the first step is educating these guys. I, I, I think we're, to answer your question, Ariel, I think we're a ways from that. Because to be honest, I think if the UFC gave the option for that, I don't think the fighters would utilize it anyway. I got to be honest with you. I don't really? think they would utilize it anyway. I don't 100% that way. Don't think. Why would they say but, no to that? Well, because like, I, don't think they, I don't think they know how to utilize it, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I'll give you an example. So like a, a 401k. Yeah. If you have a 401k, and, and the UFC said, hey, we're going to take this amount out of your pay, your paycheck. Yeah. The fighter would be like, no way. No way. No way. Give me my money. Right. And, and another thing, like we've, we've had the union talks and all that garbage before. People, like, these guys don't understand it costs money to be in a union. You got to pay. You got to pay to be in the union. You know what I mean? Like these guys just hear, oh, I want more money. And that, but there's, there's layers to it. It's not that easy. And I'm not saying it can't happen and it's impossible. That's not what I'm getting at. But I think the first step before we start talking about that i think the first step is educating the athletes on what this does for you what it is how it can help and that way regardless of what happens in the sport you can go do this stuff on your own you can't mm. count on anybody else to, to to make your living for you i've been in the ufc since 2013 and i've never had a sense of security about my job ever and nor should any of these other athletes like you have to understand that everybody there is an expendable asset like everybody there is. the ufc doesn't need anybody to make that work for them. They don't. They have a media machine behind them that they can make anybody the next star. You see it every week. They make the new thing, the next star, and that's great for them. They have they have created that. They have earned the right to do that. But I'm not going to count on somebody else paying me more to make sure my kids are taken care of. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to take matters in my own hands. I'm going to take responsibility for it, and I'm going to make sure they're set myself. By the way, it must be nice to get uh, Kansas City on the map, right? I mean, like people are coming to Kansas City to realize their dream as champion. Don't DC talking shit about Kansas City. You see that? It's not cool. What did he say? He said it. To, he, he said it was boring. He's like, oh come on, Kansas City. He, I mean, I thought it was he's very. He's never rude. even been to Kansas City, bro. I know. I mean, if he's been here, come on. It's it's dude. It's a it's a it's a great it's a great place. Like I I the house I have here would be probably five or six million dollars in in California or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the the cost of living is cheaper here than just about anywhere in the country. Like it's uh. And the barbecue is way better than anywhere else. Too. So you this is food. your house that you're in right now. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, the, the, uh, we built out a we built out a like a podcast studio. 
Uh, and we're currently building out another one uh, for, we're about to do a uh, business and real estate segment on the podcast. So we're going to make it like a different location. Oh, okay. And it's called the 1%, am I right? 1% club. Yep. 1% club. Excuse me. 1% yep. club. Okay. So, uh, two last quick things. Could you like yep. Moreno Figueredo four? Can we get like a little preview, a little Kraus breakdown? I mean, you don't want to give out the game plan, but, uh, what, what, like what's, what's, what's percolating in your brain right now? Uh, you know, I, I think that's going to depend on a lot of where, uh, where Figgy ends up in his camp. Oh, Interesting. Right. So I, I, I have heard that there's some issues with uh, fight ready. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if he goes back there. I would be shocked if he goes back there. I could tell I could tell you a little bit about that. So we just had him on and Captain Eric was translating for him. And I was a little surprised that he was there. And I asked him, where are you going to train for this? And he said, I'm going to go to shoot a box, Diego Lima, and they're welcome to come. But it didn't seem like he was going to Arizona and honestly, I didn't get the vibe that they were training together. Yeah. I, I know what happened. Maybe we'll talk. Off okay. But, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, like I said, I thought, I thought fight ready did a really, really, really good job for him. And they, they fixed a lot of his game. Shoebox is a, is a good gym. Uh, and in, in my opinion, it's a little bit more simple to break down from a game plan perspective. Uh, and, uh, I actually, you know, I like that move. I, I think there's, I think there's things that I think he's going to do the same thing he did in the last fight. I'll be honest with you. I think he's going to try to do the same thing. And now that I said that, he's probably going to try to do something different. But uh, I, I, I think Figgy is going to do. If he's going to fight his fight, I don't think he can switch a ton of different styles. You know what I mean? I think he's like he's very good at what he's good at. I'm not talking bad about his game. I mean, his power is incredible. Uh, his boxing is very good. His takedown defense is good. His get back up is good. His wrestling. I mean, every there's there isn't a lot of holes in his game. However. I feel like he's going to fight the same fight he has the previous three. And because of that, I think it's going to be fairly uh, easy to break down. I don't want to say easy, simple, mm. not easy, simple. That's not a shade. That's not yeah, shade yeah. on them at all. Once again, I don't want to get in that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's simple, more simple to break down. Brandon, however, I feel like if you watch his, his last fight with Figgy and his fight with Kai, I think you're going to see a vastly different person. And that's only changing by the week because we continue to work with each other. So it's, it's, uh, there's rapid growth with his game and things are constantly evolving and because he's at a new place now, you know? And, and how's that work? Like, will he come back? I know he's in Vegas right now. When does he come back to Kansas city? Will he only come back so for actually, training camp? Actually, I actually, no, no, no. He comes back quite often. Uh, but I leave, I'm in Vegas almost every weekend. Like I'm in Vegas this week. I will go work with him and the team uh probably wednesday thursday friday so i work with them multiple times a week and then he has capitillo he has hector vasquez boys there he's got other coaches there as well but every time i'm in vegas i work with him every day and i'm i mean sometimes i'm there for six eight weeks at a time right and who who do you have this weekend jason witt versus josh quinlan okay man almost every it's tough to be away from the family every weekend right it is man it is but it's uh you know i, there's, I have a saying that uh you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you can put it on somebody else. They tell you that on the airplane, you know, what that means is you got to make yourself happy before you can make other people happy. So That's, they um, get that. Yeah. Well said. Um, and last thing, since you announced your retirement today on the program, appreciate the, uh, the breaking news, the scoop, James, uh, yeah. favorite moment of your career. What sticks out? What, what was the apex of it all? Uh, the, the, the biggest accomplishment uh, in my life has been, uh, my UFC debut winning, beating Sam Stout, and uh, not 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 just the win, but the debut. Uh, I had had so many ups and downs in my career. I got so close to the UFC a couple times. You know, I got on the Ultimate Fighter and I lost the first time. And I got on the Ultimate Fighter again, uh, and then I I would work my way up through. You know, uh, I went to like Bellator once and I I lost, and then I worked my way through the regional scene again, and then I finally got my opportunity, and I got it against one of the toughest guys that I've ever fought uh, in his in in his home country. Uh, on 16 days notice and just everything that I overcame, it was really important to me. And uh, a double bonus, I changed my life financially that, that night. And uh, it was just really, it was really a great moment for me. And there's a picture of me, like, you know, I'm, I'm bloody. I have, you know, we're, it, we went through a, a war. We got fight of the night and uh, I got submission of the night. I subbed 13 seconds left. Just, just that. And Sam and I are now friends. We talk and uh, it, it, the moment is just really special to me. So my, to me, that was my best moment just because of, I think all of the, the, the lead up and everything came to a head and uh, it's something that I've been, I put a lot of time 
and a lot of energy and a lot of effort to accomplishing a dream. And I finally accomplished that. So. Oh, it was a beautiful moment. I remember it in Winnipeg. I think I spoke to you backstage yep. after that one and, and those who followed you in WC and everything that you had been through finally yep. getting there. And then uh, the sub was amazing. And then you got the double bonus. Uh, feels like a lifetime ago, right? feels like a really long time ago. Yep. What Almost was that? 10 years ago. Almost, yeah, UFC 161, right? So that would be what? 13. Wow, that is crazy. June. Yep. It was three days after my birthday, June 7th, 2013. And I was a 4 to 1 underdog, too. Wow. Look at that. Uh, main event, yeah. Rashad Hendo, right? Uh, yep. Yep. I believe so. And Big Country, so. uh, Stipe big beat Big Country, and that was a big upset yep. at the time. Remember that? He took yep. it on short notice. Uh, crazy. 100%. 100% Unbelievable. Man. Um, well, congratulations, James. This is really fun. Uh, you're great at what you do in all facets, coaching, podcasting, business, picks, all that stuff. I might check out your picks. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a bit of an expert myself. I had a, a streak seven in a row, underdogs. I, I have kind of I have kind of I have kind of noticed that. If yeah. you want to through, let me know. I'll throw you in. Oh, I don't know if Free I can hang charge. with you. On Free me. of charge? On me. Wow. Free of charge. On me. That's on nice. Me. I like it. And I like that you're charging for the picks. Don't be giving them out for free to all yeah. these people. Yeah. Don't do that. Eh, those ingrates over at ESPN. I'm kidding. I love those guys. <laughs> They're great. Uh, James, congratulations. Well done. I'm looking forward to doing to seeing what you do with Brandon uh, in this fourth fight. That's going to be fascinating to watch. But it was just really that clip of you getting all excited was really, really uh, amazing to see. And uh, I'm happy that they captured that. So thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. And you, enjoy man. the victory. Thank you. I appreciate you having me back, man. I appreciate it a ton. Thank you. Always. There he is. James Krause joining us. What a great chat that was. I really enjoyed that. Uh, and what a great setup he has over there. That was uh, that was very impressive. Frank, we should get something like that with the cool uh, graffiti. What do you think? Can you get that done? Yeah, and then uh, maybe some better audio. Wow. Aren't you the audio guy? You know what? We tried to get those Air- AirPods removed, and it didn't work. Jeez, guy just gave us 40 minutes. I he could tell incredible. what you were laying down. I... He was incredible. I thought it was amazing. GC, what do you think? I mean, he didn't know who you were. Are we offended by this or what? Not at all. You know about his prowess in the gambling uh, domain? No, I didn't. I didn't. Killing it. I can't. I mean, killing it. Did, Did you know about the Discord? Too? No. How does that even work with the um, Discord? It's basically just like a giant group chat that I guess uh, he pays for people to get in it. Man, James got the dog in him, huh? Dog in him, bro. 15 and 2. <laughs> That's I mean, incredible. he's sitting cage side going, I mean, was he going crazier for Moreno himself or for the bet that or he the was bet. cashing? <laughs> uh, I don't know at this point. I didn't know if he was going to say, like, no, I don't bet on my guys. But I guess there's nothing, uh, I mean, there's no rules against that, right? As long as you're not the promoter, you could bet. Yeah. It would be weird if he bet against his guy. I wonder if you can bet against it because I know the fighters can bet on themselves. Right. But they, they can't bet against themselves. I wonder if the coach can't either. Fascinating. I'm going to say that the coaches cannot bet against their own fight. Who's going to stop them? Makes sense. Who's going to stop Well, uh, it's legality. Like the book. The, the book and... If James Krauss is on his... Uh, of course, he would never do this, but if he's on his DraftKings or whatever, who's stopping him from betting against this guy? Yeah, okay. uh, that's... Stop, stopping is one thing, but they will come after. Right. Re- retroactively. Yeah. You can, you can't absolutely cannot do that. I think It'd it's really the, only sketchy if it... Yeah, you'd be betting against them, yeah. So if they the lose the fight... same as a fighter betting against themselves. Of course. It would be a horrendous look. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys heard of uh, Pete Rose. Never heard nope. of him. Yeah. Great guy, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never met him. Uh, that was fascinating, though. I mean, 15... The, he, you could tell when someone knows what they're talking about with the picks... I mean, he makes a good point with the... He breaks down the fights anyway. He obviously knows a ton about MMA. It's his entire life. Why not put some money down and profit on it, too? Yeah. All and, right. I mean, that's... The guy that he described is like... You know this guy? No, I obviously don't know. Oh, okay. He didn't give us a name or anything, but that's like... Thought maybe. I mean, that's like as, as badass as you can get as a better, where the books are like, nope, nope, that guy can't bet here. He takes too much of our money. You know what's weird? If I had gone one more H down, there was some talk of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> when are we start it, what do they up? what do they say now? Do they ask you to come? Now they're like, oh, you, you please come in. <laughs> uh, we didn't get that parlay underdog <laughs> pick that you were teasing. <laughs> the fact that the fact that I got like a dozen tweets of people taking that they took it. Parlay. Jesus oh, yeah. Christ! A lot of people. I sent that to you. I know, but I was... and you said what'd you say? You were like you said something that didn't make any sense. I it was like no. Uh, 
I can't remember what, what you said. I don't said, know what you're talking about. All The only parlay that I was a part of officially was the... Yeah, official in an hour official. parlay. And then there was the adjacent one with Drakkar, which, you know, congratulations <laughs> to everyone who jumped on that one. And look, I'm not going to lay it out for you just like in black and white. Sometimes you have to read between the lines, okay? Yeah, that's well, how... If they were really how... backers, they would have also added Derek Lewis. Yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> that's how betting works. Uh, in any I'm not going to tell you, but... <laughs> Sometimes you have to make them work for it, okay? Yeah. Uh, great stuff from James Cross. Though. Yeah, he was awesome. I really enjoyed that. All right. How about that? A retirement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a breaking news. Frank, you didn't even hit the music. The guy actually broke news. Two breaking news segments on today's program. I think it's rude to interrupt. Uh, imagine <laughs> imagine he's like, all right, F it. I'm going to do it. And then Frank jumps in oh, there. That would have been incredible. Did you consider it? Yeah. I, for, I, oh, I, my I, God. That would have been incredible. Amazing. I feel like there was a, a slight pause there where you, like, in between his announcement and me asking the next question, you could have slid it in there. Yeah, I still feel like you would have to explain, oh, it's a thing we do. and Yeah. I'm sure he watches the show now. I mean, I guess he doesn't even know who GC is. Right. I bet you in a year that's going to change. They're all going to know him. They're all going to follow him. A lot of people said they've been trailing your picks. Tailing. Tail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, on that note, let's uh, say hello to our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> the action never ends at DraftKings Sportsbook especially this summer with tons of ways to bet on all your favorite sports. You can feel your fandom and feel the heat of the season like never before. Yeah. Sometimes I listen to podcasts and they're reading the exact same thing that I'm reading and I don't know how to feel about it. Like I want to feel like this is exclusive to us. So with that said, I will let you know that right now at DraftKings Sportsbook, they are giving new customers a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. Yes, $1,000. That's right. Make your first bet up to $1,000. If it does win, you'll get another shot to cash in. Oh, I have a good story to tell you guys. Um, anyway, you can throw down on all the major action for baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options feel endless. Any big bets as of late outside of the world of combat, GC? Still working on that Bills bet. Got to place that. Okay. Still working on it? Nothing? No baseball? No um, preseason football? No golf? Absolutely not. No. Oh. Uh, no. Tour no de golf France? Since the, uh, I lost my Tour de France bet. Tennis? I'm going to put something in for the U.S. Open. I'll be out in flushing at some point. Summer League basketball? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. What about women's uh, Euro 2022? Yeah, I had a England. future on England. You did? So, uh, no. Oh. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DMAR. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. That's promo code DMAR. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the MMA Hour. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Let's go uh, say hello officially to the guys. I have a great story for you guys that I didn't say earlier. Do you want, you know, it's rare in my life that um, at this point I get starstruck. Believe it or not, I was a little starstruck a couple days ago. Oh, at SummerSlam? Yeah. Who'd we meet? Well, this is not the Star Trek, but I will tell you, at one point I was, uh, and where are the guys? I like to see them. Are they? Oh, there they are. Um, well, uh, Rick, Rick left. No, okay. Well, birthday typical. dinner. He's got to get home. Is he gone? I'm in. He's not sitting next to me. Did he like take us? He was just there three his seconds ago. Is still there. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, he doesn't have any work he's, to do. It's his birthday night. He'll be back tomorrow. To get wait, him. he just tweeted something. <laughs> he wow, just he's tweeted already to, on the road. <laughs> <laughs> he just tweeted to Dominic Mosiano, um, the great Olympian. Anyway, I uh, was in the lobby uh, walking with my friends at, from BT Sport who are tremendous Tremendous, tremendous people to work with. I really enjoy working with them. And there's my old friend, The Undertaker, in the lobby. Oh. And he was very surprised to see me. He's like, what are you wow. doing here? I'd get a little starstruck. That wasn't the starstruck, by the way. Oh. I just wanted to tell that story. Wow. Um, just, we yeah, talked a little Izzy. Nice. We talked a little fighting. We talked a little Juliana Pena and Amanda Nunes. This was on Thursday. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a moment when you're talking to him. And, by the way, one of the nicest human beings. You get, like, just a sweetheart of a guy. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, and you're, you're thinking to yourself, if you would have told me when I was 12 that I'd just be shooting the shit with The Undertaker and he would know me, like he would stop and be like, what are you doing here, Ariel? I don't know if I would have believed you. This is a guy who stuffed somebody in a coffin. Yeah. Okay. 
but sweetheart of a guy. Salt of the earth. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, uh, this is the starstruck story. And, and the, uh, the haters on online are going to love this story because they love to, I'll get, I'll get into that in a moment. But, um, I'm at the, uh, tryouts. There's, uh, there's a, a WWE tryout where they had all these people there trying out in front of a bunch of um, judges. And uh, actually, Dwight Howard tried out. He was there on the stage. It was very <laughs> weird. He was there cutting promos. It was super strange. Um, I met Jake Casper, who goes by the name of Julius Creed in NXT. He's the NXT WWE, excuse me, the NXT Tag Team Champion. NXT is sort of like their developmental league. Um, like the G League. Exactly, like the G League. Longtime friend and training partner of one Daniel Cormier uh, helped him train for the second Jones fight, the Stipe fight, lived at his house for several months. So I was talking to him. He's a huge star. He's going to get called up very soon. And he's um, his brother and him are the tag team champions. They're going to get called. They're going to be gigantic names. Everyone's going to know about this guy. So that was a lovely conversation. I, I'm getting to that's, the part. That, okay, that's not the star No, that's not the star All right. Then just... we have a, we have a, a little scrum. And Triple H is there. You may have heard Triple H, now head of creative, got the bump up. It's now uh, Nick Khan. Anytime I talk about Nick Khan, I have to mention former agent because these losers online, anytime I talk about WWE, they're like, did you know that his former agent was Nick Khan? Yes, we all know. I literally repeat it every single time I talk about WWE, but they try to find the one moment where I don't say it and accuse me of being biased. Anyway, so we do the scrum with Triple H. It was very fun. And Triple H... Again, salt of the earth, mensch guy. I feel like you're not liking the story. It's a very exciting story for me. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. We're, I'm, I'm hearing all these celebrity names. I'm waiting for the starstruck moment. Triple it's a- name drop. Yeah, a hundred percent. This that is, is, a, this is you, name you're drop galore. Name yeah. It was very exciting. And then the scrum ends. Have a nice moment with Triple H. See Biggie of MMA Hour yeah. fame. That was uh, nice. Yep. We shook hands. Yep. <laughs> <Another> name. <laughs> Saw Becky Lynch from afar. Didn't speak. She was too busy. Saw Seth Rollins. That was cool. And then I'm talking to Triple H on the side. We're talking about family, travel, his daughter's birthday. And I say, you know what? Trips, uh, Paul, you know, there's different things. Trips. Like, yeah, trips just, is great. Oh, trips. <laughs> I love that I was one. like, you know, I've never actually had the honor and privilege of meeting your lovely wife, Stephanie McMahon. And he's like, oh, let me introduce you. And so I walk over. To, I've never met her. And I was a little bit starstruck. I'm not wow. going to lie. This is the part that the uh, the jabrones, the marks, the haters are going to love. Stephanie McMahon, I've been watching Stephanie McMahon on TV, I mean, for years since she was, I don't know, in her early 20s. And there she was, the now co-CEO of the company. And we're just uh, hobnobbing it up, talking about kids, soccer practice, driving to school. You know who Stephanie McMahon is, right? Uh, yeah. The daughter of one Vince McMahon? Yep. I mean, pretty big deal. CBO at WWE. CEO. Chief brand officer. No, no more. No, no no more more because Vince left. I don't know if Mm. you heard. He quote unquote retired. Mm. So now she's up there with Nick Khan. Occasional TV villain. Occasional TV. I mean. Philanthropist. Philanthropist. Public speaker. Fitness enthusiast. Mom. All of that. Mom. 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 Three. Three daughters. Three daughters. Uh, This was a big deal. Married to Triple H. The legend. Um, Stephanie McMahon, of course. Of Of course. So I actually, uh, that's one of my bucket lists. I've never interviewed a McMahon. I would love to do so. Of course, a lot of changes in their life. So we were talking about that, and it was just a great time. Have you been to uh, to Nashville? Yeah, uh, we've had this conversation on air, off air. I heard you on air. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but now I have a different perspective now that. Yeah, I've what'd been you there. think? Broadway, Nissan. Broadway, Stadium. Nissan was a little bit of a dump. If I'm being honest. Wow, a dump. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> That's dumpy, harsh. Dumpy they went team our plays Nashville there. viewers. There, so. yeah. Where did you uh, do that like stand up from? Where it was like overlooking. Which stand up? Oh, when like, I was doing the show. The weren't pre-show? you on like a rooftop? Thing? Yeah, it wasn't it? Wasn't a place called Acme? Was it? That's interesting. Where was it? It, it might have. It was a hotel. Oh, okay, no, I was and it was overlooking this water. I don't know what the water was. Tennessee River. What is yeah, that? Tennessee water? River. All right, I just made that up. Um, <laughs> <That's lovely and laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there was a Tennessee River. And behind us, they do a great job of scouting. They have a whole team. So they found a, a hotel rooftop. And then we did our show called The Run-In with the great Rob Armstrong. And it was overlooking Nissan Stadium. I didn't stay for the event because I looked at the stadium. I took one look at it. I was like, this is so wow. dumpy. So you I'm didn't even here. go in. I didn't go in. Uh, now I'm getting uh, a disputed on the claim of our fact. Uh, people are saying it's the Cumberland River. No, whatever. Not the Tennessee River. Same thing. Is there even a Tennessee River? Probably not. I know there's a Mississippi River, right? 
No, I don't think so. There isn't? No, you're wrong. Have you ever, have you ever had Hattie B's? Yeah, uh, hot chicken. I had it. Let me tell What'd you something. What do you think? Did you have to wait in line? So we went pretty late on Friday. It was like 1130. Not a lot of people there. I had the medium, so I think it was like mild, medium, and then another one, and then another one, and then like the crazy loco one. The medium one, I mean, I was dying. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty hot. Um, no, it was like super hot medium. And so that's why... This is why, the guy who had Takis and thought they were hot. So we're just, yeah. Just to give the audience... Well, that's better. why... Go ahead, go ahead. That's why I tweeted about Nando's and the lemon and herb, this this mm-hmm. thing in uh, in England that everyone yeah, raises. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, people were pretty mad with you. They were mad, yeah, yeah, because it because that's like S- the mildest. Flag. Well, that sounds flag, yes, but that's like the mildest flavor that you can get. So I was telling people, and then like Mark Goddard's all offended about yeah, it. Why Mark do people get so hard. offended about this type of stuff? Food takes, man. There is uh, people are as strong about them as political views. So then I had to, I got a bread pudding. To try to douse my oh, mouth nice, off because nice. I was in so much pain from the heat. How was it? The red pudding was okay. I was give it a magnolias. No, I mean not even close. Did it have raisins in it? No, raisins. Yeah, it's like a southern thing. I'd give the Wait, whole no, experience I think, I think like a six and a half. Salad. No, six and a half. No, half no chicken salad should not have grapes raisins and in chicken it. salad. That's a southern. I thing. said raisins, not grapes. But uh, raisins are the matured version of grapes. I'd give the whole experience like a six, a six and a half. Not bad. Hattie B's. Hattie B's, yeah. Did you have a any A better barbecue? Nashville hot chicken in Connecticut. Bird code. One of the in best chicken places I've ever been to, yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, but overall, great trip. I don't know if you saw the highlights. Logan Paul was incredible. Uh, our good friend Patrick McAfee was incredible. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, Brock Lesnar lifted up the ring. I mean, there was a lot to like. So you did a TikTok for BT Sport. That was great. Oh yeah, did you like that? A little this, I a little did. that. That's pretty that was funny. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, actually, one question that they cut out was MMA fighting or BT Sport. You know oh, what I did? Oh, wow. They, they really, really put me on the spot. <laughs> did you do a cut of each one? <laughs> I or? walked. I walked right down the middle. Uh, uh, and then some people were saying I should have done GC or Mysterious Frank. Yeah, well, we mm. know how that would have. I would have collapsed. Yeah, <laughs> exploded. <laughs> Did you get the last one where they said lunch with Dane and lunch with Rhonda and I just walked off? Yeah. I didn't see that one. But you technically, I think you walked to the to the Rhonda side. You know, I noticed afterward what I tried. WWE it, thing? No, not even close. I, what I wanted to do was like walk off, but there was a wall behind me. Yeah. Some yeah. tough ones. Still a good TikTok. Though. GSP. Yeah. Uh, Bret Hart. I'm surprised you took uh, Bret, Bret? I, mean, I guess that was your guy. childhood. Childhood guy. It's my guy. Um, but yeah, overall, a great trip. And uh, a fun time, a fun time in Nashville. I'm looking forward, looking forward to going to Cardiff next month. That's in uh, Wales. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, you guys hear about that? I'm going to Cardiff, mm-hmm. the UK. Yeah, so, uh, United Kingdom. Yeah, clear your calendars. Going to be oh, cool. First time back since 2016. Isn't it like uh, WWE in a castle or something? Clash at the castle. Clash at the castle. Close enough. That'll be cool. You're going to Raw at the Barclays in October. I heard. I thought you were coming with. <laughs> Can't be bothered. Uh, <laughs> all right, what do we got? What do we got? You and Frank are going to go. Uh, Frank, that would be cool. You down, Frank? Barclays, I could probably get a, a hookup, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, what do you got? What do you got? Uh, we got a recap. Uh, let's 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 dive through it real quick here. James Krause, not the only one that had, uh, had some success this weekend. Um, we go... Uh, I like that, a little, a little shot at Krause. No, it was uh, you know two people, two people finding their own, <laughs> their own success. Yeah, well, I, I gave That's you a shout out to Kraus. No, no, that was nice. That was nice. Put me on the spot a little bit. Why? You know, I was a little bit nervous. What are you nervous about? I mean, he's over here talking about going fifteen and two, charging two thousand dollars for picks. I'm like, well, listen, I put a couple shekels in the bank on uh, Saturday. We go three and two uh, on the singles. Dante Mays, what a letdown. Really uh, fought his way out of that fight, but. Uh, Alas, Dober Alves, Dober saves us at the last minute. Alex Morona, you can't bet against the great white, white on Shark Week. Obviously, Kai, you know, that one hurt. Do great on the parlays, man. We've been doing uh, very well on the parlays the last two weeks. I think we're 7-2 and two, uh, over the last two weeks. There it is again for you, for all the haters, for all the doubters. Yeah. The MMA Hour Parlay. Plus so many haters, seven. huh? What's with all these haters? Oh, he's back. GC said Rick. you left. You yeah, said you yeah, yeah. he said you had a birthday dinner to get to. I was I was gone for the day, but you know what? You came I, back. My ears started ringing, and I came back. Wow, 
Well, he said you were gone. Then I see you tweeting Dominic Mosiano. I was like, damn. That's it. And the and the champ Chris Cyborg. I mean, everyone's coming at every, you. They're coming out of the woodwork. Respect. Okay, go ahead. Final recap. There it is. Three and three singles. Three and one parlays. Up five point seven four on the week. Back over the thirty unit mark for the year, and we're at our highest point ever. Forty two point five six. Wow. Frank, I think, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And, and here you are being all bashful. Like, oh, oh we're in the 30, this and that. You should have your own Discord. Mm, Discord would be fun. I wouldn't charge for it, though. What? what? James, he's a man of the game. You know, he knows what he's doing. I don't, I don't want that much pressure. Well, what that I feel attitude. like I'm already under a decent amount of pressure, you know, just giving out the picks for free. Once, once people pay for it, it feels like I owe them something. You feel, you feel pressure with the picks? Sometimes. When people are like, I followed every pick that you took this week, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to propose weird. something here. Please. Ooh. Frank feeling the pressure? I don't think the picks would change much if you were charging for them, right? Like yeah, right. I feel like now you're putting pressure on yourself for free. And your argument will profit is, off of it. Yeah, your argument is I shouldn't charge for I that. get it though. I'm saying go the other way. Char- charge it up. Nah. Pay me. I, I like. Uh, Can you imagine the paid, first email right. where somebody's like, "I can't make rent because I." I want, I want the Connor business, business to be booming. A man of the people. I get it. I get. I get the um, the thought process. Look, I didn't force you to do this. I didn't ask you to pay me. Proceed with caution. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Well, I didn't ask you to take these picks. Yeah, these are my bets. Proceed with caution. Yeah. Oh, uh, New York Rick, you missed my Stephanie McMahon story. It was really oh, run it back. Let's no, yeah, let's go. run it back. Yeah. I want to hear it. The name drop. Oh, no, all the names. Oh, oh, sorry. Undertaker. Damn, uh, that's a good everyone, one. Uh, yeah. the, uh, Becky one. Lynch. That was Becky Lynch. Uh, yeah. Ronda. Seth Rollins. Uh, no Ronda. No, no. Ronda. no unfortunately. Went to Hattie B's with Ronda. Hattie B's. I mean, there was a lot. You missed a great segment. If I'm being honest, I thought it was one of our yeah. better segments. Um, all right. I came back as soon as as it was over. Actually. Yeah. Literally. Frank, do you feel pressure now that you're a big gambling star? I was actually going to ask James if he's heard of Frank. <laughs> and I decided at the last, I didn't want to embarrass he's the him. Sharpest member of the team. Uh, I was gonna, absolutely nailed. I mean, a we're joking. Favorite. We're joking here, but legit, my number one pick of the week was Amanda. Like I would have taken Amanda Nunes if he didn't take Amanda. Batting a thousand. It was. It was the pick. We're all batting a thousand for now. What can I've, I say? Uh, I've also started compiling like the average odds. Uh, if you guys are curious, yeah, Ariel minus five twenty five. Oh, this is not nice. Big Connor thing. minus three twenty five. Rick minus three ninety five. And then obviously Frank with his one minus two eighty. Wow, Frank is the yeah. the ballsiest one, one of the bunch. Right, he's had one. Have you have you uh, decided if you're going to partake uh, for this week? You could do PFL. I, I, I you could do. I feel like you're you invited me and now you're kind of like well, no. If you want to, I'm, I'm actually trying to help you out here. But please, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I think it would be a big letdown if. After one week, you're taking the week okay, off. Okay, so then now you're saying it'd be a letdown. If yeah. I chose Don't let him pressure you, Frank. Do what you want to do. Who are we thinking? Corey McKenna, that Jason Witt. That could wait Witt. till Wednesday. I, was, I want to get a... Ooh, oh, I know who I'm taking. I see a big favorite right get, here. Minus 850, that. Terrence McKinney. Uh, That's yeah. right up my alley. Can we at least get him inside the distance or something? <laughs> it's on the list. Is there, is there a cutoff? Did we decide? It has to be triple digits. It has to oh, yeah, yeah. be. Okay, so minus, one, minus 1,000 is, is where we hit hmm. off limits. And to be honest, there's not a lot of UFC fights that are minus 1,000. Like, they're... There are not. No. Jamal Hill, minus 260. Like that one. Interesting. Like that one a lot. Now, Frank, if he wants to get Contender Series in, he's got to make that pick today or tomorrow morning. I would say... Yeah. I didn't think of it at the time, but it was a bit rude of me to do that because... Oh, to do what? GC has to turn it around and... You did a Contender Series? I did a Bellator, remember? I did um, Usman. Oh, like that's made of. I'm not saying it's not, but you I'm just trying to be cognizant and, and respectful of, of GC's time and make sure. It's your birthday, Rick. You can do it. Yeah, you it's your birthday. Josh Silvera against Omar Yachmedov. That's a tough one. Stevie, Stevie Ray, Anthony Pettis, too. Anthony Pettis, dog. Yeah. Plus 110. Running it right back. Yeah. That, that was both of their last fight yeah. in, the, uh, in the regular season. Yep. All right. Rob Wilkinson. You like Rob? No. Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> You just wanted to say his name? That was just very blunt. Yeah. He's a favorite. Big favorite. I was just looking at him. He's not, oh, minus 285. That's fair. Well, I thought we accomplished a lot today. We had the big, I'm still shook, by the way, over Roberto Soldich. Uh, oh my gosh, that was crazy. Signing with one championship. 
Uh, I don't think anyone saw that. I never heard, even like when I was talking to his team, thank you. Even when I was talking to his team, I never heard for a second that they were in play. Uh, always thought it was going to be UFC. Really? You, you signed the Amazon deal. You need to yeah. get some people to put on these fights. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. But if I'm Eddie Alvarez, I'm like, yeah, no thanks. Uh, no thanks Have you seen this fight? dude? Yeah. He's freaking gigantic. Yeah. Ripped. I'm At with you. the prime you. of, his, of yes, his career. 27. Yeah, I don't know how much I would want to fight him either. At the same, I mean, if you want to make a statement and, and really show you're back in it, that's that's one that could do it. I will say, though, with the success that the UFC is having and you see what's happening with, like, the Paddies of the world and the Mollies of the world, mm. like, they are on fire right now. Obviously, they're going to offer less. A one championship has to overpay, and they can offer non-exclusivity, but you can no longer say, like, look, look at Michael Chandler. Look at Michael Chandler pre-UFC, look at him post-UFC, or now in the UFC, you know what I mean? Like, you become a big star once you come to the UFC. Now, maybe that didn't matter. Probably. It was probably I, the money, the non-exclusivity, but there's a big difference in terms of what the UFC can do for you and what other people can do for you. But also look at Michael Chandler and how long he was with Bellator. Like, this is not a closed chapter. This is not a story over. Like, But Michael Chandler may- has become such a huge star. Sure, but I think Soldich may at some point oh, still fair. cash yeah, he's in very that young. You're, you're and, right. still, you're right. and still be in the UFC. This but is I think not... Soldich could have been a big star in the UFC 100%. right now. 100%. Given and, the look. And and where he's from in the world, there's yes. opportunities there for a lot of fighters from, from that area now. Like, yes, he could have he could have done something for sure. I don't think it's – I don't think – this could be a stop or this could be, you know, where he rides out the rest of his career. We'll see. Um, if it – look, if you if you take his word for it, if you believe what he said to you – in terms of the flexibility and wanting to fight different styles and be on what he considers the biggest platform, he he checked all those boxes, so he got what he wanted. The one thing I will say, though, I wanted to say this at the top, UFC killing it. I mean, the gates are on fire. Ticket yeah. sales are on fire. Uh, pay-per-view is on fire. Ratings on fire. Again, not to be that guy, but there's a lot of fix, fixed income. They are on par now with the major leagues. And if you're a UFC fighter and you're looking at all of this, when does it change for you? You know? Yep. Everything is going up. Everything is going up. Sponsorship is going up. Ticket sales are going up. Uh, gate is going up. Ratings are going up. Pay-per-view buys are going up. And 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 then I see like interviews with Dana on uh, Pat McAfee, and he gets like it, he gets so animated, like we don't know what we're talking about. Like the numbers are right there; we can look at them right there. They're yeah. you put them out, you put out the numbers, and you say that we don't know what we're talking about. The numbers are right there. Mind your business. Well, then don't put out the numbers if you want us to mind our business. It is quite literally our business to mind this stuff. Yep. This is our business. Our business is to care about these things. These things. If you don't want us to care about it, don't put it out. I think you're spot on. I think the biggest roadblock, and we just heard it from James Krause, is getting the fighters to be on the same page here. Like it, it is a individual sport. Their mentality is to be individuals. Their mentality is to think of themselves and not to uh, fight for the collective good. And it is, it is preventing them potentially from a lot. Yeah. What you've outlined, but I mean, you know, we just had Krause talking about it, like talking about the unions and talking about how to make money. And it being on the individual, it doesn't have to be, but it is currently. Frank, very big day coming up on Wednesday, uh, which I do believe deserves some breaking news. Four. Four in-studio guests on Wednesday. Wow. Four in-studio guests on is that Wednesday. A re- no, maybe not. There was a period towards the end there where we had, I think, like Usman, Marlon, might even had Ali in there. I remember we had... Uh... The Long Island guys at the same time before, right? Didn't we have like um first uh, first live show at AOL way back in the day? We had legit like six guys in studio with <laughs> all at the same time. Dan Miller, I think it was like Charlie Brenneman. Um uh who else was it? Uh oh my god, I can't believe I was just talking about him. Uh um give me a clue who we're talking about. <laughs> Andy Main. Oh, Andy Main. He was there, Main. our guy. I mean, it was... I, Andy Main one time came over to my house to watch the Bellator pay-per-view, the wow. lone Bellator pay-per-view way back in the day. That was fun. In Brooklyn with uh, the best. with John Beer, our pal. Yes, so uh, four, not at the same time, but four in-studio guests on Wednesday's program. So I'm looking forward to that very much. Actually, in talks to... I mean, I haven't checked my uh, my DMs, but there might be a fifth. 
Ooh. Wow. There might be a Is that fifth. all in studio? Or in studio it? as well. There was talk of a of a problem child pre-cancellation Ugh. visiting us, but now no mom. No robot? No yeah, robot, robot. No nothing. Fra- actually, big pop from Frank when he found out Jake might have been stopping by. Big pop, right? Frank, you were Listen, psyched. Frank, if you oh, want to yeah, fight him, yeah. he's, he's looking for somebody. Yeah. Maybe you could be the next opponent. I thought Woodley, <laughs> Woodley might come back out. Woodley? Yeah. Oh, to fight. Imagine. It's <laughs> <laughs> like there's a trilogy. Stop. Stop. All right. Well, that's yeah. Wednesday. We are done. Thank you very much, guys. Happy birthday. Thank Enjoy. You. Tip of the cap. Thank you. Frank, appreciate you very much. Uh, no, close. I wish. I thought we were going to do some questions. You want to answer some questions? I, I have said an enough. question for you. Oh, go ahead. Breaking the fourth wall. You remember when I asked you where your mic was during that interview? What mic? You did the interview in Nashville where they had a shotgun mic. And then oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that your choice? To do the lav? Yeah. yeah uh, I was no. just curious, yeah. Wait, what did I have? You said you just had a lav and they put a shotgun on her, so. No, she had a, she had a lav too. Yeah, wow. Well, all right. What are you trying to say? I was just curious. <laughs> wow, a little shade here. Listen, I won't allow any BT shade. They're very good to me. All right. Um, by the way, quality of those, inter- I mean, video quality, They're fantastic, nice. yeah. right? They're I mean, nice. that is high quality stuff. Oh, that was a sarcastic comment, huh? No. Went over I, my I'm head. Supportive. I don't understand. I'm not really understanding what you're uh, putting down, but uh, it was a great trip, and I'm not going to let you sour it. Uh, I enjoy them very much. Oh, why do you cover pro wrestling? Oh, would you cover an actor talking about... First of all, they're all out of character. Second of all, if you don't have respect for what these men and women do, don't come to me, all right? I don't make fun of you for playing with your magic cards. I don't make fun of you for your 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 severance and your inference and your stupid shows that you watch. I don't, I don't, I don't... Mind your business, all right? As the great Dana White once said, mind your business, all right? I don't know why people get so mad about it. Ew. It's like when people get mad about steaks being well done or chicken not being spicy. All Beans it does, being on the side. yeah, all it does is expose your insecurities. That's all it does. You are exposing yourself. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. Thanks to our guest today. I'm out of here.